um, that's that's the approach I also want you to have for for Power BI, right? I I I I I want it to be that, and that's how I that's how I teach people. That's how I to talk people. I want it to be that um, after the class, everybody would be able to beat their chest and say, oh. They understand Power BI better. They know the basics of Power BI because honestly, it's a simple tool. But if you don't ask me questions, I won't be able to pass the knowledge that I have. And at the end of the day, I have it's me that I have the knowledge. You're the one that needs the knowledge. So it's very important that you reach out, send message. If you have, I think classes that I've done, I still talk with the students. They still reach out to me to today, to tomorrow. If they have issues, oh, I want to solve this thing. They have issues. So the people that I learned with. At their workplace, like when they are working up to now, like they've gotten jobs, people that I learned with, we still, when they have issues, they see call me now, oh, you're my alpha, let's look at this thing together. And we look at it and solve it. And honestly, that's how we got better. That's how you learn better, right? So don't just, um, the class is good, but it's like a foundation for you to build on. And if you don't build on the foundation, at the end of the day, weeds will grow and it becomes useless. So I just want us to have that at the, at the back, of, at back of our mind. So yeah, <clears throat> I, I think um, it's almost 13 minutes in. So let's start. Mudia has introduced me. Um, I used to work in one of the big fours um, as a data engineer. So Power BI, SQL, and cloud-related stuff. But I'm uh, sticking to Power BI in this class. So um, I'll just start so that um, I won't, I won't um, spend a lot of time speaking. Please, if you have any questions anytime, if you have anything you don't understand, I'm willing to go over it many times. At least can confess. I'm willing to go over it 15 times, 20 times till you get it. I would rather that you get it than finish my syllabus. Like I won't do extra time with you guys just to ensure that you get it because that's that's what you paid for. So I need you all to get the value of your money. I'm a patient teacher. I pay me to say that. So um, that said, welcome to our BI class. Our first class today, we're going to start pretty slow, but it's going to be a lot. We have a lot. Power BI is very wide. We have a lot to cover in, say, two days. Um, two classes, sorry. So I will just um, start and um, um, let's see how it goes. Um, I want to ask, please, um, let's omit our mic. Does everybody have Power BI installed on their system? Yes. Yes, I, yes do. I do. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, is there anybody that does not have Power BI installed? Let me let me see that. All right. Awesome. That's good. So that makes it easy, easy for us. So we can we can um, we can open Power BI your system. We can open Power BI your system. You can um open it up. I will open it here, but just open it up while I just run through a brief of what we are going to cover in today's class. Um, so that we know what we are doing and we know um, where we are at any point in time. And just before I forget, I'm someone that I love to carry everybody along. So please um, try not to be distracted. It's just um, it's just a few hours and just dedicate those few hours, right? So that you 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 get get the maximum from the class, right? So I can just call your name just to check up on you and say, oh, are you following? Um, can you please answer this question or what do you think about something? Just so that everybody um, is carried along and we are together. So please, let's all be attentive, right? It gives me that sense of um, sense of satisfaction to see that everybody is following. So that's why I just call people randomly to ensure that everybody is following. So yeah, I would share my screen now and um, see my... The, it's in my just a short, very, very, very brief presentation I want to give. So, let me know when you can see my screen, please. Um, 
Not yet. I can't see it yet. How about now? Can you see it? Yep. 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 All right. So, um, you guys have started, from what I know, you guys have started with um, SQL and Excel, which is a very basic um, form of um, basic foundation for this for this class, because what you'll be doing is very similar to what you've done before. So um, Power BI is basically, I know some of us have not heard of it, but Power BI is a Microsoft tool that was, um, that was, that was invented for businesses for majorly reporting needs and reporting purposes to so Power BI. So it's Power and is BI is business intelligence. So you know for business to measure how well they are doing and how far they've gone as a business, what they need most of the time is they need to do um, reports because those reports tends to give a summary of what is currently going on in the business. Those reports will also help to give a summary of oh. Um, what can be done by the business, what was done right, and what was what, what they are doing wrong as a business. So that's why Microsoft um, came up with this site, um, this tool called Power BI. I love to call Power BI a blend of Excel and PowerPoint. Excel meaning that Power BI has the capacity to do most of the calculations and everything that we do in Excel, which you guys have already learned. I'm glad that you have learned it because it makes grabbing Power BI easy. Then, you know, PowerPoint on the other hand, although Excel can do this, but PowerPoint on the other hand is, okay, maybe after you've done your analysis on Excel, you can decide to oh, plot a graph and present it to people, right? So it's just a mixture of the um, analysis, the calculation part, and also the visualization part. That's why we have it, um, Power BI, BI for business intelligence. Um, also, very important to note, is, um, Power BI is a very interactive tool. Which is why it's gaining so much, so much relevance now. Meaning that you don't just give me a report and you don't just create a report with Power BI and that's it. The users can, at the end of the day, interact, click, slice, and see more insight about their reports. So if you are reporting about maybe states and um, different countries in Africa with Power BI, you can drill down to a particular state, a particular local government, gov local government. Whatever level you want, you can do with Power BI. It's very interactive, and you will see it when we get, get into the class. So this, these are things I'll be talking about. What Power BI is, introduction, desktop, and everything. So let me quickly blaze through this, so that we'll just go into practical. So I've already talked about this business decision. Businesses, uh, businesses uh, move based on decision. They make their next step based on um, insights on data. So that is what Power BI does. It's a business analytic tool um, that is used to help. And business get insightful insights on their data, you know, and visualize also these insights. Then um, this is just what is Power BI. It's a collection of software apps and connectors that work together to help you create, share, and consume business insights in a way that serves you and your business more effectively, which is what I said. Now, there are different types of Power BI's that we have. Or let me not say different types. Power BI is a broad subject. Then we have different subsections. So we have the Power BI desktop. We have the Power BI. Um, online service and we have the Power BI mobile. These are the three major, major, um, major stocks of Power BI we have. And how does it flow? It flows like this. I said you have the Power BI desktop, you have the Power BI service, and we have the Power BI mobile. Now, your building tool or the tool that you use to generate your reports, do everything, all your manipulation on your reports on data and everything is the Power BI desktop. When you do it with Power BI desktop, you can now share to Power BI service. The reason is that if I do it on my Power BI desktop, how do I get people, other people in my organization to see this report that I've done? How do I get them to see the report and interact with them? That's where Power BI service comes in. So Power BI service is like an online version of the Power BI desktop. So this is how it works. We create our reports on Power BI desktop, then we share or we publish to Power BI service. Now, in Power BI service, what I just need to do is, oh, once I publish my report to Power BI service, I can just, I want to share with um, Afiz, I want to share with um, Toby, what I just need to do is, I just get this email, um, input it, and once I send the email, he sends send the, um, the access, he gets a notification that he can access this report now, and he's not necessarily having the report on my desk, so it's just like uploading the report to the cloud, let me put it like that. So since I've given him access that, that he can have the report, can interact with the report, he can get the insights he wants, he can actually download the reports to his 
desktop, Power BI desktop, and work on it. But the issue now is if you should work on the report on the desktop, whatever changes he has made, right? He might not be able to, I might not be able to see it unless he shares it back to the Power BI service. So Power BI service is just like a cloud version of Power BI desktop. Then Power BI mobile is just an attachment to those to those two, which helps people um, get the um, Power BI on their mobile phone. So there's an app which you can also connect to so that, okay, on the go, people can tell what is going on with the business, what is the metrics that is going on with the business. And it's mostly for people that are in top management. They just need to know that maybe they are in the meeting and they need to get, oh, this is the social figure at social time. You can easily just get it to Power BI. Power BI mobile. So those are the three major um, Power BI um, tools. But like I said, the major one that we're going to be focusing on this class is Power BI desktop because that's where all the creative juice starts from. That's where we start our work from. So this is um, this is why we need Power BI. Um, I've said most of them. Um, yeah. So this is an example of a report, and this is um, building block of Power BI. We have a visualization data set when we go into the class when we go into the um text of we'll see how all of this works we have our dashboard and we have the reports so um the steps we are going to go through so um this this is a, this is just a layout of what the text of is like how when i open it i will explain everything to you, to you guys and if you have any question please let me know so let me not um boss with a lot of this since we're going to still repeat all of this during the practical section if you need this slide i can also always send it but this is just basically um what we're going to do calculations and measures this one's are things we're going to do next week so just like we have um just like you guys have um in excel i'm sure you've done formulas to get some certain things we have something similar in power bi so we call them um measures so we use uh, a we use a language called DAX, data analysis expression. You can see it here, data analysis expression. So it's just used to, it's used to um, do calculations and measures and summaries and aggregations in Power BI. So we'll see a few DAX formulas that are very essential. Um, so just like we have a lot of Excel formulas, we have a lot of DAX formulas, but I'll just show you the ones that are very, very essential. And as time goes on and as you practice, you might need to do something. There's always a DAX formula for anything you want to do is your friend i don't know everything but if i want to do it that's how i work i don't know all the formulas offhand but if i want to do it i can go online and get what i need and apply it to my report so i i normally say that there's no formula especially with anything tech safe and it and especially with that formula there's no formula you want to write that somebody has not written before you just need to search properly as you see so yes so um building reports and everything so we're going to do all of this uh, let me quickly I think time has gone, so let me quickly jump into the class. Yeah, so um, just um, to ensure that everyone is following. Does anybody have any question? Is there any? Is there any? I'll be following. Did we? Does anybody have anything, or maybe you've heard of something about Power BI that you wanted to just clarify before we get to the class? You can, you can just um, let me know. I'll be following. That's what I just basically want to ask. I'll be following. Uh, yes, you have. Um, just one quick one. All right. The data you use in Power BI, do you import it from other sources like um, Excel, SQL, and all? Yes, yes. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. You can import from various sources. That's even the first thing we're going to do in class now. So you can import okay. from those sources. Yes. All right. Yes. So, um, did I stop sharing my screen? Okay, so um, I, I believe you can see my screen now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you can see your screen. All right, all right. So I believe everybody who has their Power BI open. When you open your Power BI desktop, this is what you see. You can see this um, this pop-up. It's very important. Many people um, just open it and they just look at it and they just um, ignore it but i like to talk about it when i start my class 
because yes, you can ignore it and just go to the Power BI stuff, but this is important because here yeah, you see what's new. Truth is, Power BI is a really evolving tool. So every week or every month, mostly every week, safe, there's always an update. So this is just a quick um quick way to know what's new, to know what is the latest thing that has been added or removed for Power BI, what has been modified. Because if you leave it for long, I'm sure you can come back and you don't understand the interface. So it's just a good type and thing to note that there are times you can just come and check what's new and see what has been added. Then there's also a blog, which helps people a lot to just um, do um, tutorial, just like Medium, tutorial on new things on, or some things already in Power BI, some capabilities of Power BI that people don't know. You can get it here. Then we have the forums. Forums is a place where you would, when you're working with it a lot and you probably have challenges and everything, if you need to ask questions of people that are much, much advanced in Power BI, you can come to forums and the same thing is tutorials. So they have Power BI itself. Um, Microsoft does tutorials on it that can help people, you know, learn new things and get fam get better familiar with what they, know, what they know or even answer questions. So these are very um, good resources for anyone that, that wants to learn more personally, right? Of course, we we'll, would we'll all learn more. So it's a very good resource to always have. And this just shows you recent um recent files and everything. So it's a, <clears throat> it's it's useful. You you can check it out and you see that it's useful. So yeah, when you open your Power BI, you have something like this. Collapse this. So what do we have here? We have our uh our view, this view. So this view now you can see that you have your file, your home start modeling view help all of these there are tools that you use yeah honestly if i must be honest there are some tools here in all of these places that i've not used to today but i might still use them maybe because of the sort of industry i'm in and the scope of work i'm doing now i don't get to use them but you still use everything so you can see your home um this is how you get data we're going to get data from various sources um it's going to be hands-on so please everybody like i said before let's open our, our power bi so that we are, we are going together um, get data, various sources, and please download the 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 data that I sent. Download it to your system so that we we'll flow together. So as I'm doing, you need it. I want you. I want you guys to do it in the class, and you can try it later on your own. But I want you to do it in class because once you do it like that, you, it's easy to remember later. So you can get data from various sources. So these are just telling you. You can see it's a data. Sorry okay. to jump in here. The data that you said that you opened the folder has a lot of um, it has uh, a lot of files and uh, a lot of files in that folder. I don't know which one you're referring to ex yeah, specifically. Okay, did you see a uh, Power BI class? Like a folder called Power BI class? In the data analysis course called to data. Okay, so what I'm asking is there are different, there, there's a lot of um, Excel sheet. So the, he'll, yeah. I'm sure they want to know if they should download everything. Yes, please, everything. It's just about okay. three, I think. It should be three now. No, no it's, it's more than three. It's about ten. Ten? You sent ten. me Adventure Works. No, 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 no. I just sent it on that one. Oh, sorry. That would be. But you mm -hmm. can download those ones because those ones are what we use in our second class, most likely. So you can keep them. But the one Oh, I you sent it differently. Yeah. Have you seen it? The only adventure works I can see. Hold on. Sorry, sorry for the mix up. Let me let me look at that. I will send you another meal. Is it global superstore you want them to use? Yes, but it's different files. No, so, you didn't send that one to me. Let me so I, I attached it. I mean I did not I missed what my attachment. So I will send you another meal now. I'm, I apologize for this. Maybe it's a previous. Okay, so I just saw one now. Customer products, global superstore. I should download that one for Denver. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Just, All I right. just put it in the file so that it's together. No worries. So just while she's while she's doing that, I would I would just be talking about while she's doing that, I would just be talking about um I'll be talking about what we have here so that once she's once she's done, we'll just um go into it. So 
this is a data pane. So these are the various um, places you can get data from. So in Power BI, you can get data from a lot of sources. You can see um, Excel, Data Hub, SQL Server. So if you will click this Get Data now, you can see you have Excel, Power BI data sets. That means they have an inbuilt data in Power BI that you can use practice on your own. Power BI gives you that inbuilt data set that you can use to practice on your own. You have data flows. You have the Tavas, SQL Server, CSV, in fact, more. I will open this more so that you see how wide and why Power BI is very accepted. So you can see, these are all the places you can download and get data from. So you have your file, the file, these are the various files. You can read CSV, you can read JSON, you can read PDFs, so Parquet, SharePoint, folder, you can get data from there, from various databases. If you are getting data directly from databases, these are the list of all the databases you can get data from. SQL Server, Oracle, whatever it is, you can get data from it. Any database you want that is here. Uh, we have the Power Platform. Um, Power Platform is a very um, close brother of Power BI. It's a Microsoft um, sort of platform. I'm sure some of us might have, might have heard of it. We can also get data from there. Um, Azure services, uh, Azure SQL, so this is relating to the cloud and everything. You can get data from it. Um, online services. So SharePoint, if you're working in a place where they use SharePoint, Dynamics, 365, you know. All of this you can see at uh, Google Analytics, um, Smartsheet. You can get data from a whole lot of things here, right? I don't think... It's scarce that you not see where there's any place that you want to get data from that you cannot um, get it into Power BI. Then also um, other. So others too can mean you can also see we can get from the web, you can get from ODBC, you know, is um, you can get from Hadoop. So Power BI is such a versatile tool. And the reason why they did it like this is because many times business want to measure measure their data on the go. They want to see what is happening in their business. So what Power BI helps you do is you can actually say, okay, I would create a report based on this. To, I will connect to the server directly. I will connect to the database directly and create a report. And I will set my Power BI that, okay, as more information is logging into the server or whatever table I'm talking to in the server, I set my Power BI to be refreshing every 10 minutes. I set my Power BI to be refreshing every hour. So as every time everybody is looking at it, it's giving them a live update of what is happening in the business. So it's different from when, oh, you go to the server, you download the data, you carry it to Excel. And when it's in Excel, you now carry from Excel, you now carry it to Power BI. That's good. But here it's giving the opportunity to see it on the go as they happen, as they hawks. You'll be seeing it as the thing is going. And it depends on your Power BI license. If you do the pro license, you can even be refreshing every minute. It has that option. But for the free version, I think they, they allow you to refresh maybe once every day. That's this version we're using. They allow you to use a uh, prefer refresh once every day, which is still fair for any business, right? At least by the end of close of business, you would have seen, okay, this is how I'm doing it. So, so, so please, this is my step, this is my statistic, this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm doing it, and everything. So it's just beautiful. That's that's what makes Power BI and beautiful. Um, we'll come back to this and we'll just try a few bring in data together in a few from a few places but i just want to go through all of this now i know in 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 um in excel you could do something relating to power power query yes so that is what the second pain is for these queries so sometimes when you bring in your data right the data might not be in the exact final format that you want it to be you might need to do some maybe cleaning you might need to do some modification you might need to do some aggregation maybe add a new column or extract something all of those things you can do it and you do it in transform data. That's what this transform data is for. I would show us how, if I work of our class today will be in this transform data pane. I'll just show you how to do um, all the, some major transformations on your data. And um, so it's, it's easy. Perhaps if you bring in data and data is not clean for maybe your Excel or you need to join two tables or something, you can do everything here. And that's what we're going to do today later in the class. Uh, once you have your data then, all these are inserts, just like you have a normal insert in. Remember I told you that Power BI is like a mixture of PowerPoint and um, Excel. So inserts, maybe you are doing, this is more like what you have in PowerPoints, yeah? PowerPoints where you say, okay, I want to put a text, I want to the shape, 
all of those things you get it from from this place um you can also see insert so you can put your text you can put your buttons shapes just to edit your reports to make it look very um to make it look like what you want right then all of these two um honestly this is more of the power platform this is ai so power bi also has a function where you can ask questions so you ask questions you ask power bi questions we'll do it next week you can ask power bi question based on your data quick questions you can actually just say what is the country are making the most sale and it gives you the answer so it has some ai embedded features in it which um which we'll look at next week please remind me in case i forget because i always tend to forget on this part but remind me then um Sorry, Afiz, please note that down so that you can remind Yami next week, please. Thank you. Sorry, Yami. And I've uploaded the data so everyone can download it now. All right, please, let's let's download it while I just wrap this up. So modeling is um, another part in Power BI that is um, that you use to manage relationships. You can see everything is blocked because I don't have my data yet. So when I put my data, we'll come to this place and we'll do, we'll do a little bit of, of modeling and view yes things like teams you want to change your page view you want to filter you want to do bookmarks all these all these are a little bit more advanced power bi bookmarks where you click on one one part of your report it takes you to an entirely new report you know there are things that can be learned but i mean we will not start there it's a gradual process so i mean for this um class that we are doing we might not touch it because it might i still feel even the basics are a lot to grab if you go into these bookmarks, it's something that you can learn later on your own. Once you're familiar with Power BI, it will be easy to grab this. There are many tutorials on this online on YouTube and everything. Um, then this is the mobile layer that I was talking about. So when you finish doing your report, you can come here after building your report and just click mobile layout and you to show you how it will show on a person's phone. If the person were to bring out their phone and connect to your report, it will show you how it will show on the person's phone. And you have your help button, which is normally um, there um there's a place i wanted to show us where we publish but when we start doing our report we see, okay yeah this is it remember i told you from power bi desktop we sent to power bi and um, power bi service so yeah this is how you send it when you, you click publish it will just tell you oh, where do you want to publish it to um and you publish we'll publish we'll publish one together <coughs> and we'll see how how to publish how the publish works um so yeah here we have um we have i hope i've not lost anybody but we'll soon get into the interesting parts here we have three you can see we have our reports so that means this page is for everything relating to reports this is where we build our report this is where we do our report transformation and everything here we have our data this means when we bring in data all the data all the tables that we bring in will show you this point and we bring in data and everything this is where you see all the data that you bring in the modeling I believe um, this part, I believe we've done things about, from SQL, you know things about, oh, a primary key, foreign key, and all of those things. So we do can do that in Power BI also. So what this modeling tab does is like, if you have various tables, there are ways to relate the tables together. So we do all of those relations here on modeling. So, you know, for example, if you have a table that is called um, sales, and in that sales table, you have a, a you have another table that is called customer. I believe um, Mide would have done this with us briefly in SQL, and um, primary key and foreign key. So you have your sales table and you have your customer's table. Now in your sales table, you have information about a particular sale, but you just have a customer key. That customer key in that sales table is your foreign key. But in your customer table, you have a customer key too that is your primary key. So you have to relate, you will want to relate both tables together. So what we do here in Power BI is that we can join both tables together so that I can be able to tell which customer is doing is responsible for a particular sale and everything. But I would I will touch that briefly again. Um is that's for next class. That's for next class. But I believe we are already familiar with it. When we are doing the practical, it will make a whole lot of sense. Then here. Finally, in this part, we have our field, uh, three, three panes here. You have the one for fields. So this field is where your data will come. You can see it already has a get data tab. This is where you see all your tables and your data. And I mentioned something about measures, more like formulas. This is where you would write them you know, and store them here. Then you have your visualizations. These are your various charts that you might want to show. 
there are various charts and you can even get more charts here you can get more visuals download more visual templates here so we're going to use a few of these charts um, you can play around it more after the class and you see how they work and this is filter so filter is what's one of the powerful tools powerful tools in power bi filter works in such a way that it's just like all everything every other sort of filter but what makes power bi interesting is you can filter on a page you can filter on all pages meaning that you can click on you can add a filter here to filter across various pages you might have of power bi in case you have like four pages you can put a filter here that filters on all pages you can put a filter on these filters on this page you can put a filter here that filters maybe only one page then when we draw a chart you see another one that comes so that will say filter on this visual that means on a particular um, page i can filter on one chart that i want if it's only that chart i want to filter on i can filter on that chart so we see more of that when when we go into when we go into the class but just for um to to um just to entice us a little bit i just want to show you a sample of a report that i did some time ago just random report so this is like what the report can look like you know this is what you can learn by the time this class is ending so it's just to entice you a little bit to see that it's very possible i built this in let an hour, an hour i think the way power bi works for me is i i spend my whole time doing one page once i have that page done I just duplicate, 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 and just change some values, and I have a report ready. So the bulk of the work is in the back end where you are doing your cleaning and your modeling. So that's why we spend a lot of time doing that. I know people want to see visuals, you want to see visuals, but I always say if you can do your modeling and your cleaning very well, your visuals will be very easy. So you can see this is just a quick report that I did some time ago. So these are the kind of things that you can learn and what you can do with Power BI. It's not interactive because I just extracted it. But normally it should be interactive. If I click on this place, it's supposed to change and show, and you will see all of that. So yeah, please, um, everyone, um, let's do get data. So um, for the get data, we're going to start very simple. So I believe we've downloaded that folder into our system, and let's start with this. So if I want to get data, I want to bring data from my Power BI. Data can be from any source, like I said before. So I come here, I click get data. So first of all, let's do this. Let's do get data from um, Excel workbook. So you see Excel workbook, I click it and it will just tell me, oh, navigate to where um, the data you want is. So I come here, right? I open this and I click Global Superstore. So you can see it's an Excel file, as you can see here, Excel file, and I click open. So you can see now in that excel file that i sent it has you know the new way excel has uh, excel comes you have various sheets so i have three sheets in that file so it's asking me oh which one do you want to if it's the only one i want i can pick one but for me for the sake of this class i want us to pick all three so i'm picking all three sheets and you can see it's supposed to it will show a sample of what you are picking here you know when you pick all three it shows a sample of what you are picking and you can see a sample of this is the sales part you can see this global superstore a you can see it global superstore b you can see it and what i just do is i just load the data uh, i am sorry for okay yeah um, uh, can you go a step back um just after the get data i was trying to do the same thing so i left my this my my team screen for a second there Oh, sure, sure, sure. I have sure. to put my Power BI to try to do the same thing you're doing. So I click Get Data, Excel Workbook. Then you brought up some folders, Custom Office Template, SQL Server Management Studio, Visual Studio 2017, and Zoom. So yeah. I want to know which folder yeah. you... Which, which, which folder? Are you seeing... Uh, are you seeing my screen? Uh, yes, I'm looking back at it now. So have you clicked Excel Workbook? Yes. Okay, what came up? It brought up folders. Yeah, so where did you, you've downloaded the file that we just sent, yeah? Yes, I, it's in my download. So you have to navigate to where you downloaded it, like navigate oh. to where you downloaded on your system, then select Global Superstore, it should be inside there. It's an Excel, it's an Excel file. Okay, no problem. I'll do that, thank you. 
Yeah. Just let me know when you are there. Please, is everybody, is there anybody that's, that is on the same page or anybody's lost somewhere? Um, let me see. Um, are we, are we on the same page? Are they for Larry? Are you, are you with me? Have you gotten, have you gotten your data? In favor? Um, uh, you? yes, I am. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, the one that spoke now. Okay, I was not yes. seeing you. Okay, okay. okay. Hello. Favor, how? Okay. Um, it's a moment. There are three files in the Global Spot Store, right? Yeah, there are three files. Oh, all right. Uh, um, so. so. What are the name of the files you are seeing? Global Super Store B, Global Super Store A, and Sales. Yeah, so they're they are not exactly three files. Those ones are like sheets in a particular Excel file. Okay. So it's just one Excel file. Uh, uh, so have sheets inside. So you are clicking all three. Like okay. you, you box beside the three of them. You click it. Then you now put them. Um, you go to you click load data at the bottom. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody that is that's probably having any issues? Um. Um. Um, it, there is a pop-up, though it's loading the data, but there's a pop-up that says there are pending changes in your query. Okay, the uh, pop-up. It's, it's loading the data, that's why. Okay. Uh, it, has, it has removed the pop-up now. Yeah. Um, Olua Tobi, sorry, I don't know people's, I'm just using the name that is um, showing on my screen, so yeah. I, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. All right, all right. I, you, are, you are the same um, page we are, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Simbiata, how about you? Hello, Simbiat. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I believe uh, anybody that has a question, just, um, just unmute and talk while we just continue so that we'll go on. So now, that's how you basically that's how we bring in. So I if you look at your screen now, you see that in that field screen that was that was empty, you see that you have the three this thing that you selected, the three sheets or tables that you selected, you see it there. So now if I come to data here, I can see that if I click on global superstore A, you can see that there's data sharing. If I click on global superstore B, you can see that's data sharing. If I click on sales, you can also see that there's data sharing. So that's how you bring in um from excel so that's 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 how it is it is so so just to just to um explore that options right so let's do another one let's bring in that will see useful to this class let's bring in um let's say let's say we do get data um i want us to bring the remaining files now if you observe the other two files that are in the folder that me they shared is their their um csv files so i want us to bring a csv bring in a csv file so you can see when i go to get data I can come to text slash CSV, or you can go to more. Make it easy. If you just know the format of the file that you want to bring in, right? You can go to more. Once it pops up like this, you can search. Okay, I want to bring in a CSV. So you can see text slash CSV. This is, I'm, I'm doing this so that people that might not know, I know it very well. That's why I can navigate to where this is. But in case you're having difficulties navigating, you can just search. And you can do test slash CSV. I click on it, right? And I do connect. So it takes me to my local system and I can select whatever I want. So I'm bringing in both customer and products. So I'll bring in customer now. And I want everybody in the class to bring in products and um, customer and products. I'll just do only that for customer so that you can do it on your own. So we do open. Very important. Please watch this that I'm doing. Now, CSV means format separated values. But let me let me even go. Let, let me let me go from this point. Let me let me explain something to you so that you understand what I mean. So now, in the in the in the folder that I sent, right? If you come to this, let me navigate there. If you come to this place and I open the folder, now I can easily see what type of if they send you a document, maybe as a data analyst, they send you a document, I can see what type of document it is. So I can see that this one is Microsoft Excel worksheets, which we brought in. So it's an Excel file. I brought in, I brought that in as an Excel file. 
I can see that this one is a comma separated values, meaning that if I open it like this, um, I open it with my notepad, you can see that each of the values are separated by commas. They're separated by commas. So I know that comma is my delimiter. So comma is what is separating each values. So what I would do now is, knowing that this is the type of file I have, when I come to Power BI, I'll go here and go to use a, and bring in a CSV file. I will select the file that I want, for example, customer. I'll click on open. Now, when you click on open, <coughs> when you click on open, you can see that it has opened here. Because I've been able to observe and view the file that, I, that, I, that I'm bringing in, I can see that, oh, the delimiter is comma. But there are some times that the delimiter might be a semicolon. There are some times that the delimiter might be a tab. There are some times that the delimiter might be a colon. That's why it's good to preview your data like that so that you know, okay, this CSV file, what is what is the separator? What is separating one um, one um, entry from another? I can see that it's comma. So that's why I can easily select comma here. And I'll just load it. And it comes up. The same process that you did before. It comes up and it shows up in this place. You can see your customer. So um, let's quickly um, um, do bring in, everybody please bring in your customer and bring in your, your products that will be on the same page. So at the end of the day, when you are done, you should have um, five tables here, which are going to use for today's class. So please, let's go ahead and bring in customer and bring in products individually. If you're having any challenge, just let me know. I'll give us like um, two minutes for that exercise. Um, then I'll, I will continue. So if you have any challenge, just submit your mark and ask, ask so that I'll walk you through and, and show you how to do it. So please, bring in customer and bring in products, please. This, uh, yeah, come on. Let me know when we're, when we're done. If you're having any challenge, let me know also. I think the other mini class I'm not seeing on the screen. Done. All right, you're done. All right. Um, how about I need like like four other people, four persons to also indicate that they're done. Um. Oh, I know I get it. Um. So he, please. I've not heard your voice. How is it going? Hi, Tohi. Can you hear me? I guess he's not here. I can hear oh, you. Hi. I can hear you. Oh, okay. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah, sorry, I, I just joined in, so I'm trying to play catch up. So I'm trying to see if I can load my data and on my pad yeah, and catch up with you guys. All right. If you have any any question, just 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 raise your hand or don't hesitate. Okay. All right, no problem. Thanks. Yeah. Um I'm done. That... All right, who is that, sir? Um Favor. Favor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I have two persons now. I need like three more people so that I know that most of us are done. Um, Oluwa Femi, how is it going? <clears throat> I'm done as well. All right. Thank you. Um, Oluwa Femi, how is it going? Oh, sorry, Olu Femi. Are you here? Okay. I need like two more people to indicate please, so that I know that like that gives me a sense that we got we got to the explain. So are you done? I'm done. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So just one more person. I need one more person to also just hear that they are done. I will move on. Awesome. 
Anyway, I'm I, I believe. Hi, um, sorry, I mean, sorry, I'm trying to put you back a bit. Was there any sort of transformations that was done on the global store data? No, global no, super store. I've not done anything yet. I just selected. You just select the three sheets that were that are there. Okay. 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 All right. So yes, yeah, so we move, we continue. I believe everybody has a data. Um, so if um let's continue. So now you have a lot of this. So yeah, just for to help us because um other times I will giving us tasks that will involve this. So let's also try and do a sample of getting data from the, the web. So maybe you want to get data from the internet or something. So I'll send a particular link now. So let's do, for example, I want to get the, the data from something, maybe a site, Wikipedia. So let me do that for us. Um, um, yeah, so I'll share this. Ah, I don't have access to the chat. Though. Okay, you know what? You guys can just search for this. It will just help you search for this list of countries by GDP, GDP this site. So just search for this on Google. It gives you this um this page on Wikipedia. I just want to show you how to bring data from from the internet. So list of countries by GDP, PPP, PPP. So once you are here, what you just need to do if you want to bring data from any site, what you just need to do is okay. I'll come and copy the link. When I copy the link, I go back to Power BI. I go to get data. I'm just showing you this for for. I'm just showing this so that you can know it. I go to get data, I search for web. So I see my web, I connect, I press connect. And what is asking me is, oh, put the URL. So the URL I copied, I just paste it. So what this does is, is go to the website, grab everything that is a table on that website and, you know, Give me the option so you can see now it's loading and um let's wait for it so you can see on that website now it's still showing me all the html tables everything and everything so the, the table i need is this one you can also see showing me the view of the table that i need right you can see the web view of what i need we're showing me the table what i need so with that, you're able to pick, okay, from that website, which table am I looking for? Not this one. Which table am I looking for? This one. So for this, this is the table I need from here. And I just click on it and I click load. And it loads the data into my Power BI. So that's how you get data from the website. You are not using this data. I'm just, I'm just doing it to show you that, okay, it's possible to get data from from this source also. So you can also just try it on your own later. I won't, I won't, we won't spend time on it, but once you copy, the basic idea is copy the URL, paste it, navigate to the particular table you want to bring in, bring it in and you have your data. I don't need it, so I'll just um, delete it. My model, delete from model. Then the final one I want to show us as regards to get data, because it's very important. Why I'm showing us all of this is because you need it. So, I will not just show you Excel and leave you with Excel and maybe you are somewhere and you need to get data from maybe the web or you need to get data from a database, you will not struggle with it. So that's what I'm showing you. The data we're going to use for this class, we've gotten everything inside already. So now um, I can say, then I want to get data, the final I want to show you, I want to get data from um, SQL Server. I believe all of us have that, we have been, we have been using it already. So that's why I picked that. So I want to get data from SQL Server. I have one installed on my local local machine. So what I'll do is I'll go to get data, come to SQL Server. So what is it showing here? It's showing it's showing me oh, enter the server. Um, it's telling me enter the server database and everything. So normally what happens is if you have a server um a server that you've been given that you need to connect to, this is where you impute. You know that one nine two dots. 108 dot something 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 that we normally have this is where you impute it in normally but for the one installed in my local machine um this is the server name let me look for it so to get the server name a simple way is just open your ssms 
that's a simple way to get it. Open your SSMS. Um, when that opens, you see the server name, you can just copy it and then paste it. But like I said, you can connect to any server, or whatever. Once you have the once you have the server name here, you just put it here and it will connect. So for example, now on my local machine, this is it. I have my server name. This is my server name. So I'll just copy this. Right, come back to Power BI and paste it in this server name here. And I click OK. So as you can see, it's showing me all my data, my databases, and I can see all the tables that I have on my local machine. If I wanted to bring in any table, all I just need to do is I'll just select and I'll select and I'll just load and to load it into my my um, Power BI. So that's how you connect to database. If you are doing it for the first time, I ask you for um, authentication. So what you just need to do is you put the username and password, just log in, and you'll be able to bring in any table that you want. So you can try that. Just try to connect, and, and if anybody's having any issues, and just let me know before we move on to the next thing in class, which is which is quite quite um. Yeah, I want everybody to really follow if you have not been following before. So please try. Let's try um, bringing in data from um, your server. If you run, if you have any issues, just let me know. So I've shown you how to bring data from three sources now. How to bring data from Excel. Actually, four. How to bring data from Excel. How to bring data from um, um, is the data is CSV. How to bring data if data is um, on the web. And how to bring data if it's from your from a particular server. So I think that's I think that covers um, practically all the areas possible areas that we'll be getting data from. So please let's try this server part because I know many people usually have issues bring. In fact, fun fact, I know somebody that has done a class before that um, I didn't show how I, I didn't show the person this part and in the interview. All they ask the person to do is they just give the person a, a server link and said, Oh, bring in data from so 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 place. Of course, she was able to get it and, and get through the interview, but I mean, it just shows you that these are things that can be asked in interview questions, bring in data from so 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 place. So you need to just know how to bring in data from all of those other places, every other, every place that, that every possible place is still the same process. So please, let's just try and connect to our server and see if we get to that point where we can select tables and load data. If we get there, then that means um, we've gotten, gotten that part very well. Everything as regards getting data, fine. So yeah, I'm waiting for feedback on that. I hope I'm not, too, if I'm too fast or you're lost, please you can, can, um, can, say something i can't see the chat so i would prefer that you just probably raise your hand then unmute and talk but let's try let's let me know if you have any challenges with getting data from sql server you should have you should have sql server running our local machine so please let's let's try it So are we there? Are we there? Did we get it? Um, before, did you get it? Or oh, he has it going? I'm still on it. All right, all right. My data is loading into the Power BI. Awesome, awesome. That means you can bring in data. Yeah, it's in now. All right, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's in. Um, um, but. Do I need to delete it for yeah, you the, can delete it. I just wanted to show you because the data we're using is for the one we brought in, the Excel and the CSV files. That's what we're majorly using for the class. But I just wanted to so, show us. Um am I clicking delete from model? Yes, option? delete from model. Delete from model. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um. Adiola, how is it? Did I get it? Yes, Adiola. No. Did I? How is it going? I didn't hear. I didn't hear you, please. So yeah, it worked. Oh, okay. Awesome. 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 So I guess it does work for anybody. Is anybody having any issues? Uh, okay. So I guess everybody's on the same page. So yeah, that's just how we get data from various sources. So right now you should have um, five tables: customer, global store B, global store A, product, and sales. Oh, I think I deleted the sales table. I thought it was from the one I got to from the SQL server. And you can, yeah, you can bring it back in. So you, you bring it this the CSV one, right? Oh, uh, that's it. All right, so let's let's move on. Let's move on. Um, so, just a minute. Did you please, if you are here, please check your check. So moving on, now that we have our our data here, most is, like I said, the bulk of the work is cleaning your data and getting your data to the point where it's where you can make and bring insights for you. Many times the yeah, um, data is normally clean, but you can't always vouch for it, right? If you're a full-time Power BI de developer, you expect that maybe the database guys have organized their data or data engineers I've organized their data and data is clean and ready for reporting. But sometimes there might just be some transformation that you need to do on your own, right? Or if you are doing the, if you are getting data, sourcing for the data there yourself, the internet or something, you might need to do some transformation and cleaning of the data. So that's where we come to our transformation, transformation that we want to do very well, very much today. So to transform my data, what you need to do, you come to transform data, Click on transform data. You see that there is transform data here. I click on it. Sorry. I click on transform data. What this does is it opens Power Query. I know I already used to Power Query from Excel. It's very, in fact, it's the same thing. So Power Query will help us to do various transformations that we need on the data, correct the data in whatever way we want to correct it. So I'll just show some basic transformations that we do on data generally. The, the one that you should look out for so that um you know that these are things I can do on my data. From from in fact from from a glance you can observe your data, you can see oh I have no problem. So I have to get rid of it. You can also see some um things that might not be right in your data when you observe your data just to check okay are there duplicates and all of those things. So um to check are there duplicates these things so that can make that um so they can make those corrections on your data. Yeah. So um let's start with this global superstore. This is my first table. I can see that I have nulls and everything. So if I want to deal with nulls on my table, that means I want to see oh all the all the columns that are blank, all the columns that are nulls, I want to get rid of them. I can come here just to check. I can say, okay, let me select, let me filter to the ones that are null. I have a null value here. Okay. How do we remove null? Power BI. What you just need to do is you select that particular table, which is global superstore B. I come to this place. If you can see on your home, you come to remove rows. Click remove rows and you do remove blanks. I came to remove rows. I'm sorry, please come again. Yeah, I'm going over it again. I clicked on the on the, the table that I want, Global Superstore. In my home tab, this is home here. Yeah. My home tab, I come to remove rows. I click on the drop down beside remove rows. And you can see various things that I can remove, but I want to remove blank. So I come to remove blank rows and I click on it. 
to it has removed all my blank if i come now and i try to filter you can see i don't have any null again so it has dealt with the null let's do another one the same thing i want to do for my global superstore a i click on global superstore a i can see that oh i have null i can see the nulls here i want to remove the nulls more like blanks so the same thing in my home i go to remove rows and i go to remove blank rows once you click on it it has gone I come here, I do the same thing for my sales. Sometimes you just do it just to be sure that, oh, there are no blank, at, there will not be blank at all in my data. Right? So I do the same thing for customers, remove blank rows, and I do the same thing for products, blank rows. So please, let's, let's, let's all try that. Let's every, let everybody remove, please remove all the um, blanks from your, from your, um, various tables and ensure that you can confirm by clicking trying to filter for blank and see if you have that option if you don't have it that means you successfully removed so let's just do that together if you need me to go by it again just um, tell me so that I go by it again but that's how you remove um, blank rows so um i will need them um, feedback if you if you've done it if you if you are still on it if you are struggling with something i'll need you back please just to just so that i know that everyone is following i think i've done it all right awesome for the for all the tables yeah yes all right great Please, uh, because i went back to check for null and it's not there anymore all right great great um other people please let me know yeah i've done it too okay thank you do i close the transform data no, 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 please leave it open. Please leave it open. <laughs> That's, I'm not, we're not done with everything we want to do. I just showed us one transformation, which is um, removing, moving, um, okay. moving on. Yeah. So I'll just continue. I believe everybody's on the same page. Please, if you have any question, please, please just um, state. Now, just to show us other transformations that we can do here. Sometimes when you bring in your data, I don't know, you might have seen it. Sometimes when you bring in your data, your, um, you might see a situation where your, all your headers, they are not coming up as headers like this. They will be like down. It will be like a row on, a row on its own. So in Power BI, this, this data set that we use now, it has a, like it's proper. But in a situation where maybe this row ID, other ID, other data, all of these things, they are in the first row. What you just need to do in that particular situation is you need to promote it as header. So you just come here, use first row as headers. You don't have to use it now because it's not, I mean, that's not our situation. But normally, if we had that situation, what we do is we just click on use first row as headers and to promote all of these guys to become headers. That's how you make your first row headers, right? But this our data is okay, so we don't have to do this. But just in case you encounter a data that has that issue, you can just come and click use, it's still on home, you come, and click on that transform, use first row as headers, and it makes all your first row headers. Now, if you observe very well, in this left part, you can see apply steps. So what this apply steps is doing is, it's showing us all the steps that we've gone through. Come again, sorry. Did someone say something? Sorry, that was an error. All right, all right, all right. So you can see now on the left pane, you can see apply steps. What is apply steps? You can see if I click each table, it's changing. It's changing, it's changing. So what is apply step is doing is showing us all the processes that have been done on this particular table. Meaning that if somebody tomorrow comes and looks at this table and the person wants to know, oh, what are the things that you've done on this table? Though? You can come and see them here. So you can see source. What this source is saying is, oh, the first thing that was done is this is where Power BI went to pick the data. This is the navigation, right? Then you can see originally, 
like what I was explaining before, originally at this navigation, when the data came in, this is how the data was. You can see that these rows that I was talking about, they were in the first first um they were in the first row. These um headers, they were in the first row. So Power BI detected that and did an automatic promotion of the headers. So that's why you can see now with this third step, it made all of them the headers. Then all the things we did together, the filtering that we did, we moved blank. You can see that I recorded it. Now the last space is we filter the row. So that's the last step that was done on this particular data set. So I just wanted to show you that you can track what you are doing, go back one step, delete a particular step based on this um, applied steps on your right. And you have each for each table, you have applied steps that is showing for each table. So yeah. So that's the first thing we've done. I've shown you how to um if you're if you have nulls, I've shown you how to do deal with the nulls. If you have um your first row has not your first row is not your header, I've shown you how you can probably deal with that issue. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um we're going to append. I want to show you how to append two tables together. So now for the purpose of this class, I, I did I something. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to take you back. All right. Could you kind of go over how you removed the nulls again? Okay, so to remove nulls, I told you you click the particular table that you want. Uh huh. Then you click on home. This is your home. It's already on your home defaultly. You come to remove rows. Remove rows here. Now, in this remove rows, you click I, on. Sorry, I don't have that remove row options on my tab. What's, what's showing? I can see manage columns, reduce, reduce rows, right? No, remove, remove. There's yeah, that reduce, yeah, that reduce rows. On that click on it, you see remove rows. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yes, yes. So what's happening with you is your own is not, I, I think is not open like this, like your the all the functions are not showing like this. So you have to. Just click on it and you see remove rows. Under that remove row, you see remove blank rows. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. So, yeah, I was going to say, I said, so for the purpose of the class, I did something that would, that would help us. So, you know, many times in the, the way data might come from maybe the database team or maybe online and everything, the data might be yearly or it might be monthly. So maybe you have a data that is, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019 on separate tables, right? Or you have the one for various months of a particular year on separate tables because of storage. They normally separate partition data like that. So there might be a situation where you have to do, do a report and you have to combine two tables together. That's what we call the append function. Um, append is like adding one, adding two tables together, putting it on top of each other, like heaping it on each other. That's the append function. So that I, want us to I want to show us how to do it. That's why we have this global superstore A, global superstore B. Because if you notice, they have the same row, row ID, other ID, other dates, and this one too has row ID, other ID, other dates. So this is just showing that it's the same thing. So if I want to consolidate this to just one table, so that I don't have to, since I want to report on this global superstore, I don't have to have two different tables. This is where the append comes in. Like I said, the use of it might be okay. Maybe you have your data split into various years, maybe five years data, each having a different Excel sheet or a different table. You can add it and consolidate it, consolidate it to one for reporting purpose. Um, so how you do that is I can click on any of them. Take, for example, I click on global superstore A. When I click on Global Superstore A, I will come to, when I click on Global Superstore A, I will come to Append Queries. Append means to add. I'll come to Append Queries. And when I come to Append Queries, you can see, I have two options. You can see Append Queries, then Append as new. So what this is saying is, I can decide to say, oh, I want to append to this particular table that I've selected, meaning I want to add to table A, like this table A that I've already, Global Superstore A that has, that has selected. I just want to add the B on that. Or new query can mean I want to create a, an entirely new table. 
I want um, Power Query to create an entirely new table for me, which is what we are going to do. Or I will do both. I will do both so that we see. So, for example, if I click this first one, append queries, yeah. So you can see when you click on it, this is what he this is what he said. It says concatenate rows from two single tables into, into from two tables into a single table. So it's just telling you, okay, so which table now do you want to add attach to this global global store A? Global super store A. I come and I click and I say you can see A is correct. I just say I want to append B and I click OK. So it has appended the query. So um that's it. That's one step. Meaning that this A now has both A and B. But I don't want to use that method. I want to create it as I just wanted to show you in case you want to do it on the same table. You don't want to create a new table, but I want to do a new table. So what I'll just do is I'll come to this my apply step and cancel it. And I'll just come to append queries. Both of them are basically doing the same thing. What one is doing is is appending it to A. This one that I'm doing now. That I'm saying append queries as new is I want a separately new table different from these two that is already there. I want a an entirely new table. So it's asking me my first table. I say first table. You can see if it's two tables, three tables, I can add as many tables as much as I want. But this is two tables. So I say my first table is global so superstore A. My second table is global superstore B. And I click OK. And it has appended. And you see that a new table has come up now. And I can just rename this. If you want to rename it, you double click on it. And I can just re rename it as final um, global. Or I just name it as global superstore, which is the final table that has a consolidated data. Me has consolidated all my um, both years for both um, separate data sets for me. So that's how you do it. So it depends. Anyone you want to do, you can do it on your own. Just know the one that if you want to append to A or you want to create a new one, do whatever you want. But just so that we know that those options are available. That's why I did both. But I prefer to just do it as a new one. And it just shows your um, over to pass store. And just to confirm, just to confirm, we can do something simple to confirm that what we've done is right. Now, let's find out how many, um, how many, how many how many um, what's the what's the amount of data in this a so let's look at it to get the number of rows in this a i come to transform oh wait let me wait let's get to this point let's get to this point this global superstore so please let's let me know if you are if you are in global superstore if you if you have if i you think have i'm confused okay yeah, yeah like because i went to append queries yes Two tables here yeah? and so um, oh. global superstore A is like the current one. So I'm going to add global superstore B to it here. Yeah? Yes. Okay, then okay. Yes. Oh. Okay. So quick question. When you when you did your append queries, which one did you pick? Is it append queries or append queries as new? Just append queries. So what that one does is it attaches it to the table that you are working on already. So it just oh. adds the second one. But when you do append as new, it will create an entirely new table. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, it does. So I should try and append as new or what? No, anyone you want to do. I just wanted to show you that you can do either this one or this one. Anyone you want to do works perfectly. Okay, so I think I'll just append as new and see how that works. So now you, you have to be careful because if you append as new, you know you've already done for A. So you have to delete that step, that last step on your on Global Superstore A. So how do I go about that? So when you click on Global Superstore A, you right? Yeah. You will see on the applied steps on the right, applied steps. Are you there? On the right. Um, yeah, but... Okay, now I'm lost. Okay. Hold on, I'll I'll find you. <laughs> so I <laughs> are you on Global Superstore A? Yes, I am. All right. On the right, can you see the place that you say apply steps? Something like this on my screen. 
Um, oh, okay. Let me just because I'm switching my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. It can be difficult. Or do you mind? Do you want to share your screen? Let me just. Okay, that's screen. that's fine. Then let me just share my screen. All right, share your screen, please. I think I'm sharing now. So this is it. This is the global pastor A. Yes. So now what you've done is you've already done the append, yeah? Yes. So so I need you to click on global pastor A. Okay. Um on the right, there's nothing on your right. Can you scroll the end? This is like the end. Okay, hold on. I need to get, I need to get, um, I need you to get that, um, query settings. Let's wait for you. This is not showing on your, that, that pain is not showing for you. So, I need to get it up. Just give me a minute. Or is does any other person have any question or you are on the same page? Uh yeah. I have a question. All right. So I clicked Global Superstar A, then I went to append Global Superstar B. Yes. So the Global Superstar B tab is still showing on my left. Is that okay? Like it's showing on fav uh, fav uh, screen now. Yeah, uh, it's sure. It's to show. Okay. And if you want to correct, like um, um, if you like want to undo something you like something you already appended, is there any way to do that? Yeah, that's what I want to. That's what I want to do for her. That's what I'm trying to get for her. Oh, okay. All right. David, can you go to view? You said what? Sorry. Can you click on view? View. Where's view? Where's view? View is at the very top. Yep. Can you click on Q, the query settings? Just click the, on the first one. Yep. You should have it on the side now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. So this is what I was saying. So you've appended various queries. So yeah. we just, um, can everybody see favor screen? I believe you can see favor screen. So, um, favor now you have appended query one query two query so these are this is just telling you all these steps that you've done so what, yeah so what i want you to do is i want you to just go back you just delete the query one query two and query just click that x by the left no but no yeah sure yeah or you just yes delete so um this is how you go back if you made a step and you want to reverse back this is how you reverse back and take so I should just delete everything and then start yeah, yeah, first. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, so that it's okay. duplicated data. Then this also. Yes, so you are back to just where you, um, yeah, where I was. To, yeah, where you were. So now you can click on yes. No, I think I want to make it like a new table. Yes. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't make a new table yeah so it, it depends on how you want to do it so that means whatever table that you that you selected first will now become like your main table mm -hmm. so you well, yeah, yeah, okay yes so this append one was the one you did before so you can delete that so this append two is the one now that is um, can I like rename it? Yeah, it does double click on it. Yeah, I rename oh, it. To okay. what so, um, I think final table. Yeah, any any name that you want.
So that's it. Yeah, that's 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 it. Um, is there anybody that is? That is Are we on the same page, please? Um, um, Toby, thanks for that help. I think you're the one that spoke. Um, let me see. Toby, why is it going? Can I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. sure. You're on, the same page. on the same page, okay. All right, so um, I, I know that we go on break soon. We go on break soon. Um, so let me just let's just quickly do something um, before we go. Uh, sorry, Yomi. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, the table that I did, the append query that I did, um, added the B to the A. I can't see any append uh, uh, like favors query where there was an append one of append two on my own screen. Though the function uh, cell, uh, what's it called? It's showing that um, removed blank rows global superstore B in the table A that I selected. Okay. So, so what 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 has happened is you most likely did just append query. You didn't append as new. Yeah, I didn't append as new. So if you want to go back, what you just need to do is you go to your global whatever. Whatever table you selected first, maybe A or B. Which one did you yeah, select? A. A. So you go to A and you take it back to the step of remove blank column. So you delete the other steps that that has been done. Are you with me? Yeah. So when you delete the other step that has been done, you now come back to append queries and append as new. So how do I delete the other steps? I went back to I on the apply steps. I went to remove blank columns. So after I remove blank. After I remove blank clothes, you have other steps. Like yes, append, appended for you. Yeah, so just look beside it. Like you see something like an X. Yeah. So just remove all yeah, of Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, so when you're back to remove blank columns, when you're back to that step, go back and append again. Okay, all right. Then you now have to, to show you as append, you just rename and all of that, and you rename it. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, okay. it's showing append one now. Yeah, so you can rename it. So um just for just final thing I want to show us before we go on break quickly. Um so some so just to confirm what you've done, many times you just want to ensure that oh what I appended is proper and right and everything, just a just to know the counts. You can, there are many ways you can do counts, but the way I like to do my own is just to confirm. I, you can come to, for example, this is my global superstore that the appended one now. I go to transform. When you go to transform, in transform, you see count rows. So meaning I want to count all the rows that, I've, that I have done. And then you click on count rows. It does a step of counting. And you can see I have, Five one two nine four, meaning okay. Now my final um, global superstore has this number of rows. So it's one thousand two hundred ninety-four. So it is telling me this what I have. I can delete that step. Delete the step. I deleted the step. Then later you can just to confirm. You can go to your A, do the same thing. Go to B, do the same thing. You can now add both of them and see if it's if it's the same with what you have in your final global superstore. I'll go over that again. So I said. We've done our, um, we have a final global superstore. We've appended boots. I want to confirm, okay, the total um, rows that I have here, is it the same in total if I add both A and B? So I just did a simple, well, I want to count. If you want to count your rows, there are many ways you can do it, but this is just one way I'm showing us. So on my global superstore, I go to transform. When I click on global superstore, I go to transform, right? When I in transform, I go to count rows. You can see it here. Count rows. When I count it, it does the it counts all the rows for me, and I have fifty one thousand two hundred and ninety four. So that's showing me the number of rows I have in global superstore. But like I like I said, it's always a step. So I don't want this step. I don't need this step again. So if I want to go back to where I was before, I just come to count counted rows here and delete that step, and I'm back to my table. Then if you now want to confirm, you can come to Global Superstore A, 
do the same thing transform count and we can see 14377 i come to um the second one transform count 369117 so when you add everything you see that it sums up to what is in your final global superstore so that's how you can just confirm and count just to but most times it's not necessary but just to you know just to check in case you are missing anything you might want to do that but i just wanted to show you how you can how you can um how you can count your number of rows in in um in power bi so yeah so um you, you guys can just um count and confirm that we have the same thing that your that your total is the same it's when you add both a and b the final table has the same number of rows so um i think we should go on break in about three minutes so before we go does anybody have any area that uh, you are struggling with maybe we lost you in the course of the class i can easily just get you up to speed before and everyone comes back from, from break. So let me know if you have any challenge. If not, um, see in about um, two, 10 minutes. 15 minutes rather, we'll see in 15 minutes. Hello. But just before we go, I want to just ask um, feedback, please. How is, are, are we following? Hello, back. Are you guys following, please? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll be back twelve fifteen. If you have any question, you can just um, raise your hand. If you are lost, raise your hand so that I'll use this time to bring you up to speed with the rest of the class so that you follow along. I'll be expecting anyone that has issues to 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 reach out. I can't see the chat, so you just have to raise your hand or talk. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. If I may ask, it's likely we get there, but just in case we don't get to that point, when you um, append a query, and then, if, if, for instance, if you don't append as new, and you just append that query, yeah. if for one reason or another you um, make make an adjustment in in one of the tables you let's for let's say for instance you know we appended um b to a here so yeah. meaning a is a uh, major table so yeah. if for reason after appending not as new just appending b to a you now make an adjustment in table b yes i have had this instance where it says Say something like um, it just throws the whole thing off, kind of. Oh, yeah, I, I get I get your question. So you are saying, for example, if you've appended A and B, and later you change your change your B or you change your A. Yeah, you change something. Maybe you went to um change the um data type, for instance, in one of the columns in B. Yes. So what will happen is you would see that. That your final table mm. would show it would throw an error. Mm. So that error would would um would prompt you, you would just keep getting that error. So what you have to do is you've changed something, you now have to go back and reappend. However, if I append as new, that won't happen, would it? If you append as new and something whatever affects your source. Yeah. It still affect your final even uh -huh. your append as new. So okay, you still so have to work on it. But it won't throw an error. It will throw an error. Like to show it to show that one inside, to show a one inside. It was even showing on my on mine before now. It was showing on mine. When I did that, for example, let me share back my screen. Remember when I was showing like I was just showing how to count rows. And what happened was at the point of counting rows. So when I came, you know, this is my final global superstore. This is the final one. It's all good now. But when I came here and I did another step on B, where I said, let me count my rows. 
I said count rooms. Mm. You can see the moment I did a step here that was affecting, I've changed the version of my B because this mm -hmm. is the latest step in my B. You can see that my global superstore now is already giving mm. an error. Mm. So when I now go back and delete this count row step, it's back to normal. So whatever you do at the like the origination point will affect your final um your final final table. Thank you very much. Incidentally, I thought that only happened when I just merge. I'm uh, sorry, when I just append yeah. and not append as new. So I didn't realize it happens in both instances. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, see us all at 12.15.
All right. Um, it's 12.15. Are we here? Are we here? I am. Okay. I'm here. I am. Yes. Well. Just continue. So yes, um, continue. I think I'm still sharing. So we are we are all on the same page. We are here. So the next thing we're going to do. So just to overview what we've done handled um, nulls, we've done first drill as headers, um, we've um, tried to append, then um, I also showed us how we can how we can count. Now another thing I want us to show is um, what we call merge. So the application of this would just simply be a situation where Oh, you are getting data from different, like the same thing, similar to what we've done before. You know, append, I was saying, oh, maybe you have data from maybe two different years or two different months or something. You want to consolidate it as one. Now, while consolidating, what you can see from this data set, for example, is it looks like there's a sales table. It looks like there's a customer table. It looks like there's a product table. So you, what we might want to do is we might want to say, oh, I don't want all these tables to be different. I want to consolidate it as one. Now, there are two schools of thoughts to this. If you are dealing with enterprise data, by enterprise data, I mean data that is very, very large, petabytes of data, and many will advise that you leave your, your um, data set separately. Like you have your facts and your dimensions. Let me put it like that. Your you have your facts table and you have various dimensions. It's easier and is a faster way for efficiency, it's a faster way to report petabytes of data. But if your data is not so much and is like small, like what we have, we just have like 50 something thousand rows, which is very small data. It will be advisable for faster reporting to consolidate it as one. So that's what we're doing together now. We've done the append. Now I want to show us the blank. So we have our sale and the merge, sorry. We have our sales, we have our customer, we have our products, we can, um, merge them together so what i want us to do now what we're going to do together is we're going to merge these sales this customer and these products we're going to merge it to this global superstore now you discover that sales customer and products have a unique id with global superstore which is row id so in your global superstore you have your row id which is supposed to be like a, a unique identifier of each entry into each entry that's each transaction that was made the same thing with your products, you have your row ID. The same thing with your customer, you have your row ID. The same thing with sales, you have your row ID. So what this merge is doing is doing like a left join that we do in um, SQL. So if you want to merge, what you just need to do is you come to your global superstore, the final global superstore that you have. You come to it and the same place, just the same place you went to do your append, you can do your merge. So I click on it, but this time around, I don't want to merge as new since I already have my global superstore as one and I've combined A and B. So I don't want to I don't want to have to create a new one. You can create a new one, but I don't want to because I've done I've created a new one already. So I want to just merge to this particular global superstore. So I click on merge queries. Now, if you notice this is what it has shown me. It shows me a, a pop-up that shows merge. So what it's saying is, oh, currently you are on global superstore. What do you want to merge to this global superstore table, which is more like your join? What are you joining to this table? So I can click here, this drop down. I can select what I want. You can see global superstore is connected as current. I can come and select customer that I want to join. I want to merge customer. I click on customer. It showed me my customer table. So what is asking now is it's saying, okay, you can see both your global superstore and your customer table on what column. Do you want to join boots? Or what column do you want to join boots? So I say I want to join on row ID. I click row ID in the top part. I come to this down part. I click row ID. Now you can see it's telling me join kind. Depending on the kind of join that you want to use, you can select um, 
I know we've done our joins in SQL, so it's just similar to the same thing, the same thing we did in SQL, very, very similar. In fact, it's the same thing, not similar. So for this, we're choosing a left outer join. I mean, we know what left outer join is, keep everything that is on your left and bring everything, bring the, um, bring the um, values that are similar from your right based on whatever you're joining on. Right is the opposite, full outer join, inner join, what is that? Um, what is um, common to both. So I, I won't go through all these joins with us because I believe we'd have done it. But for now, we're doing our left after join and we've done our real ID. It's common to both tables. And I click OK. And we have it here. You have this. So you can see it has, in this global superstore, before there was only one apply step, which was the source. Now it has brought out the merge queries. So this is what it's showing your customer. Now, what this is showing is, it's showing everything in your customer table. It's like everything is consolidated into this particular column. So what I want to do is, that's why if you look at this space, you have this um, stuff on your right, that if you click, it's now telling you, okay, well, from that customer table, which columns do you want to bring in to this new global store table? So I can say, okay, I have other ID already. I have real ID. I don't need both of them. What I just need is customer ID and customer name. And I click OK. So you can see customer ID and customer name is up. I can just rename it so that it doesn't confuse me. Just rename it to only really customer ID. I rename this one to customer name. All right, please, did I lose anybody? Did I lose anybody, please? I did for Larry, um, favor. So he... hey, I'm, I'm trying to do it. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, because it's a bit hard toggling between the teams and also my Power BI, so I think I'm just going to wait for you to run through and go back my Power BI and try and run it. Okay, okay, okay. So mm -hmm. when I finish explaining, that's when you can try it, yeah? Yes, yes. So that's what I'm trying to do. So I don't have to always take you back like, oh, can you go back on this or something? All right, that's good. Just just try it and let me know if you have any challenge. So that that's how we do it. So we're supposed to do similar thing for customer, product, and sales. So I just want us to get the first one. Then we can just do the second one as, as, as uh on our own. So, um, so this is similar to like in Excel using VLOOKUP, using the, the primary key to bring in um, the other columns that you actually need into the, um, the fact table or dimensional fact table. <laughs> yeah. There's something like that, right? Yes, fact table, yes, exactly. So that global superstore is like, yeah, you can say it's your fact. It's just a, me, I'm just consolidated, consolidating it. So you can say it's your fact table. Not necessarily facts in this scenario because the next data we're going to be used will have a proper fact table, but it's similar to is it similar to that what you just said? Uh, yeah, you're me sorry. Um, so I've done it, but to before I proceed further, I have a question. Right. So um, on the customer table, mm -hmm. the the arrow or what would I call it where it was telling me to expand? Should yeah. I still select the row ID? You don't need to since you already have row ID on global. Yeah, that was what I thought. Yeah, I didn't because select ID and I didn't select other ID because I have both of them already. So it's just duplicating data. Okay, yeah, because it duplicated it duplicate the row ID. So row ID, other ID, customer ID, do I need to, okay, I think no, that one is not there, right? That's yeah. So you right. most of you just pick the rows that you need majorly that are not already existing in the table that you are they are merging to. Okay, so I start from customer ID, customer name, and that's yeah. all. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Yeah, I've done that. I think it works well. Awesome. Um, sorry, Yomi. Sorry to drag you back. I think I'm going to drag you back a bit because right. my laptop was hanging. So, like, I did not follow not what you. <laughs> I did not follow what you were doing. You said um to we're going to merge tables. I think that's where like I stopped. So, okay. like, I'll go to um if 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 I understand you to where I lost you. I'll go to merge queries. We're not going to like create a new distance. We're just going to merge it. Yes, you can not merge it as one. new. I'm just saying you can create new one. It's just that you just be having new, 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 new. So I just said 
instead of having various new new ones, let's just work with that our final. Let that final global store be our final table. So anything we're doing. Okay. Just... We'll just use that particular table. Okay, yeah. so now I'm on merge table. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to merge customer. Yeah, so what will happen is I would because we're supposed to merge customer products sales and everything so i've done customer i'll do products and i'll go through the step again so that you see that you just do it for the okay other. because i clicked on customer now and i'm seeing two tables one for global superstar and one for customer yes 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 so when i do for products now you will see how we do it so you can apply to customer and you just apply for the other ones okay so every other person that has probably gotten it you can just attempt doing the other ones on your own while i run it for those that didn't get it so um people are you with me yeah, yeah i'm here i'm here so now, um, so I want to do this. Is my global superstore. I've, I've added my own customer. This is it here. Yeah, but I want to do for products. This is very similar to what we've done before. So on global superstore, I come and I go to merge queries. Okay, let me do it like this. I go to merge queries. I'm clicking merge queries. I'm not merging as new. This is previous. I'm doing now. This first part shows you the table that, has, that is selected. This is my global superstore. This second part is asking you to pick the table that you want to merge. So right now, we want to merge products. Now, we have to find just like foreign key, primary key, all this type of things. The row that is common to both that I want to do the merge on, which is like a join, is row ID. So what you do is on global superstore, you select row ID. Products, I select row ID, right? And I said you can do different types of joints. Like you can do all the joints you can do on SQ, you can do here. So it depends. You can select any one that you want, your right outer, your inner, your full outer, all of those joints you can do it. But for this, we are just sticking with left outer. So when you select row ID, row ID, click OK. So by the time you click OK, you have a, pro a new column called products. Now in this column, all the Col all the columns in your original productive are embedded inside this one. So what he wants you to do is he wants to act, he's not asking you, okay, for everything that is in products table, what do you want to now join? Which columns do you want to join? So and I now said you will click this arrow that is here, that is like expand. When you click on it, you can see all the rows that are on products. I can say, oh, I don't need row ID because row ID is already in your global superstore. I don't need other ID too because other ID is already in your global superstore. I can leave my, I say, okay, I want my product ID category, subcategory, product name, and I'll just click OK. So now you can see that I did those, um, I think, four columns for me. You can see my product ID category, subcategory, and product name. So I can just decide to edit it because this name is too long. I'll just remove all these products in front. Um, Paper, did you get it? Um, yes, I I did. I understand. Okay, so just but still it. removing the product ID and the role ID. Do mm -hmm. Do you do that for like, um, the rest of the um just um other tables we are trying to merge yes i'm going to do that because i already have i already have both on this on this um on this global superstar originally i have the row id and um, other id so i don't i don't want to put both of them together so what those ones are doing they are just uniquely identifying those they are uniquely identifying the other on the other table but i don't need it in this final global superstar table because i already have it it's the same thing so it's just like duplicating data so that I'm just removing and picking only columns that are uh, new, entirely new. To okay, apply. so I think my next question is like on the row ID, no, on the other ID, yeah. How do you know? Let's say um, I'm scrolling through them. How do I now know which was from product or which was from customer or which was from which? How do you mean? Come again with your question. Okay. I think I'm not wording it well, but um, oh god, how do I ask this question now? Um, you know, each table has like their own other number or row yes, ID. Other number, yeah. Like yes. when you merge this table together, and yes. you are not putting the other number or row ID because 
it is already on the table that is merged. How yeah. do you now indicate which is which? So you know that at that when that pop up came up, we yes. selected row ID. Yes. So it's merging if it's if the row ID is on global superstore, if is that row ID is what is unique. Oh that means that repeat itself. Repeat itself. So if the oh. row ID is 200, yeah. what it's doing is when it goes to the product table, it looks for um that, that same row. 200, 200, then it now merges the product and the product category and everything, merges it together. So I'm merging on that row ID. That's what is unique. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So it's just important. Right every time you want to do a merge, try and get what is the um, unique column so that you can use it to merge tables together. Okay. So please let everybody just um, do the same thing for sales so that we'll be on the same page. I'll quickly okay. do it too. I'll do the same thing for sales and with them. Um, so you'd have merge customer product and sales. Have questions, please just um <coughs> hello. Yes, I can hear you. In my global superstore, um under the postcode, I I have nulls. Can I remove it or like yes, we'll, we'll, it? Deal with, we'll deal with that after now. We'll deal with that after now. I intentionally put those there so um so that I want to show you something I can do that can help with your transformation also. So we'll deal with that after now. Thank you. Yes. Why well, are you on the same page with us as regards to this merging? Yes. All right. So you've done all three, I guess, all three tables. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I need that I need us to indicate when we can continue. Um just maybe just in just say done. done. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Toby. Like other people, maybe two, three more persons to meet. Just move on. So hey, why is it going? Are you, are you with us? I've done all three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So let's move on then. Okay, let me wait for favor. Favor, how is it? Are you are you with us? Um, yes, I'm just on the sales table, just doing it now. Okay. That's the last one. All right. And I'm done. Awesome. So everybody should have something like this. Um, sales quantity, you have all of this at, um, added to you. So depending on how you want to do your data, take for example, if you want to make it more organized, you can actually move your rows. Let me just show you. If you want to move, for example, I want to move customer, maybe customer name and ID to, I want to reorder it so I can just drag it to wherever I want. You know, drag it to wherever you want. And drag customer name just for other six. You know, sometimes you might want this to follow this to follow this so that you understand your data. Just to present your data in a way that you want that you understand better, so you can drag it any how you want. So that's how to, you can just reorder. So when we've done that, once we've done our merge, now we're having a single table that is containing all of the information we want. So um, I would now want to um, do something that addresses what. Um, what's the question that was asked but before that i can decide to say okay now that i have all my data in one one spot i can say okay is there a possibility that there might be a possibility that data is duplicated that means everything is the same like i have the same data appearing twice so power bi gives us the function just to check if we have um if we have a data appearing twice and how do we do that so I can just say on my global superstore, which is like my final table, I can come to keep rows. So what we want to do now is we want to check, do we have duplicate data? I can come to keep rows and I can go to keep duplicates. So keep rows is just beside where we went to for remove columns and everything. So I go to keep duplicates. It's just scanning through the data to check, okay, do I have duplicate data? 
and we will see if we have that when it finish when it loads so just in case so you can see now some records have come out so let's look at it let's for example let's pick one um id let's pick let's pick this id just to see I filter to it. So you can see, this is, ah, okay, they have different rewrites, it's quite all right. Why is it duplicate? Not actually duplicate. I don't know. Not duplicate. It's just the same other ID. I filtered the other ID. Or oh, show me the same thing. Sorry. Let me go back. Sorry. So right here. So like I said, we want to check if we have duplicates. So we come here. We say keep duplicates. Processing, keeping duplicates. So if it if it brings out results from this keep duplicates, that means they are duplicates. So all we just need to do is for those records that are duplicates, we just need to keep one record for each. We just need to keep one for everything that is duplicates. Keep one. So all we can do is um so now that I can see that there are some duplicates records about twenty um twenty four. I can see there are some duplicate records. I can come here and just remove this step. It has taken me back to this last step. I'll just come here and say um, remove rows and I can say remove duplicates. So sometimes I do this step when I'm processing my data just in case there are duplicates that I'm missing out and everything. So what it just does for me, it just ensures that every record I have appears only once. So if I go back now and I just try to double check and I say, okay, let me keep duplicates again. It's not supposed to show me anything because it should have removed all the duplicates. Sorry, I don't know where my system is. So you can see. The keep duplicates is empty. That means there are no duplicates anymore. So I've confirmed that I can just delete this step back. So meaning that at that as at this step, this remove duplicate steps, there is no there. I don't have duplicated data here. There's no data that has been duplicated. So I have unique data, just one record of each throughout this um for each of this um for each of this. For this record for this global superstar so that's how you remove duplicates so you can just come you don't necessarily have to come and say keep duplicates and everything just to be safe just come just remove duplicates just in case they are duplicates because you don't have one record appearance wise Hello. because the idea of a good design of a database system is every entry should have a unique um a unique role to it every entry should be a unique role so for example if if this is like a superstar, like you said, someone comes and the person orders um the um five different products, the person orders a shoe, a bag, and maybe a shirt. Now, why we know that that is one order, it is expected that for a good database design, all of those orders are entered. So one one row goes for shirt, one row goes for shoe, one row goes for a cap, because it's it's it breaks it down easily like that to so that um, granularity instead of entering everything as one you can see the same other idea appearing three times because the person bought three different unique items i hope i didn't lose anybody there but i was just trying to explain why it's good to just remove duplicates so nothing appears appears twice so that's for removing duplicates next we'll move to um next we'll move to the question that was asked so for example now Another transformation that we can do here. Um, in this poster code, now we have null. And it's okay if you want to leave null. But take for, say, for example, I want to um, 
I want to say, oh, this null for the for the report that I want to do, I want it to look very organized and everything. I don't want to be showing null, right? I don't. I want to now replace everything that is null here with something because I can't essentially say remove nulls because if I remove this null, it will remove the whole column. So I can't I can't leave this null. But I can say okay, maybe I have a default poster code that I want to use. That I will just tell the business users that oh. If you see this note poster code, just know that oh, this person did not provide poster code when they were um, making their purchase or something. And you can also see something very important. Let me even show us. So you can see if you observe all of this, all of these um, records, you can see under real ID, you can see a particular green bar. So what this green bar is telling you is the records in this particular column, you can see they are all valid. They are all valid. So with this, you can just have an insight and overview that okay. This column has an issue. So you can see poster code now. Is part of it is green. The other one is like black, showing like what you can see. It's showing just 195 valid, 806 empty. So that just tells you that, oh, at a glance, you can look at oh, which row has problem, which one doesn't. You can see that that's the only row that has a problem. So let's replace this now with maybe a default value. Let's say our default value will be maybe on one and five zeros. That's like 10,000. One and four zeros. That's like ten thousand. So if I want to give all of these nulls here a default value, all I just need to do is I'll come to poster code. I like the highlight poster code as a whole, right? You can see everything is highlighted. I will come here under transform, replace values, replace values. When I click replace values, it's saying which value do I want to find? That means which value do I want to replace? So I can say replace null. I just type null. And it's not saying what do I want to replace it with? I say I'll replace it with maybe 10,000 or something, or any default value you choose. You can pick any value. But it's best to just remain in the same data type. I will explain that data type to us very soon. It's best to remain the same data type. So if I click OK, So it, it, it will do the replacing now. So just to go over it again, what I did was I selected the, the row, poster code. I came to replace values. It asked for the value I wanted to replace. I type null. It asked for what I want to replace it. I, I, I type like 10,000 and then just click OK. So if I click Global Superstore again, you can see now the poster is showing all green, meaning that there are no, there are no errors there. Is hundred percent valid. So that's how just that's how you deal with. So maybe sometimes um, if it's a place that is blank or something, you can just put um, undecided or something because sometimes in some data, maybe for example, it's gender. You see male, female, and some people did not did not put anything. So you can just decide to say instead of doing away with that data, I can decide to say anywhere that is blank, I will just put others. Or anywhere that is something else, or if they put M and they put F, and I say no, I want it to be actually be fully male and female. So I just say anywhere that they put M, put male. Anywhere that they put F, put female. So that's how you can just replace values for your transformation um, quickly. So yeah, so that's how you do your um, that's how you do your replace values. So yeah, let's just do that and. Um, let's see. Let me see. Are we are we on the same page, please? I know some of us have to go and try it now, so I'll just wait for us to try it and get back to me if you have any issues. And please, once you have once you have done it and you are, you are, you are with me, you can just indicate, just say something. If you've replaced successfully. Yeah, um, I'm with you. All right, thank you. Done. Hello. Yes, please. <clears throat> My, you, you know, you said the other time that um, the table headers, there is a green um line or there should be a green line showing everything is okay yes however in my table order my in my table yes. uh, okay 
I think my system is just being slow. Like it's just booting. I've seen it now. It was the green line was showing on some tables and wasn't showing on others, but it has popped up now. All right. But are you, have you have you done? You've replaced. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Awesome. So um, we've just gone. Uh, just gone. Um, so recap. We've done. Um, append. We've done merge. We've done replace. We've done. You know, so let me just show us one more thing. Just this is not necessarily important, but it's just I just want to show you the part, the things that you can do that maybe when you are when you get data on your own and you're trying to try something, you can use it and it will just help you. So take for example now we have the the dates, the other dates. This is the other dates. Yeah. And you can see the dates that it has come up as other date and everything. But maybe for example, you want to you want to um you want to say for this date to I want to extract a particular portion of it. Say I want to extract the year alone to a particular column. Or sometimes it might just be, you know, there are sometimes you get a data that, for example, maybe the other ID, it has a lot of things embedded inside it. But for example, you can see this other ID. What's what I can see is like maybe CA. CA is like the state. This is the year, and this is the other ID. So maybe for your reporting purpose, what you need alone is this other ID. That's this one two four eight nine one. Or maybe for the date, what you need alone is this year, 2012. So it's more like um, I don't know if you guys did um substring, substring in SQL where you extract a part of a whole to a new column. So you can also do that here. So let's just do one just for just for knowledge sake, so that you see how how that is done. So for example, if it's other dates. That I want to extract. I want to extract just the year. So I can say, okay, let me extract this 2013. And every year I'll extract it into a new column. So I can say, okay, I select on other dates. Then I will say um, on other dates, I can come to when you click other dates, go to add column because I want to extract it to a new column. I want to put it in a new column. I don't want to replace it. I just want to extract it to a new column. So I'll go to add column. When I go to add column, I can see um, extract. I click extract. Now it's giving me the option, like where do you want to extract from? What do you want to do? So I can say um, I want to extract everything that is after this second slash here. So it's just like I say, it's just like substring. I want to extract everything that's after this and second slash here. If it was this one, I wanted to extract this um, these numbers. I can say I want to extract everything that is after this hyphen. So this is like a delimiter. So I'll just say extract text after delimiter. It depends. You can approach it from any with any logic. But let's do extract text after delimiter. When you click on that, it's asking what is the delimiter you want to use. Mine is a backward slash. Then it's not saying I'll click on advanced options. So I'm not saying you should scan for delimiter. If you can see from this place, there are many places that this particular um this particular backward slash appears. So I have to tell it that okay, well, which particular one am I referring to? Which particular one do I want to do the extraction from? So I'll say, okay, from the do I want to start counting from the forward or I want to start counting from the last um the last character. So here I will say I want to start from the end of input. That means I want to start from the last. So that means I want to start from this end. And you say number of delimiters to skip. I will say none. If I was starting from the front, I can just say from the from the start of the input, and I will say okay, skip one. That means the first slash that it sees, it should skip and go to the next one and count. But let me just do from the end. Um, I, I don't want to skip any limit and I say OK. So it's processing. And it's done. So you can see text after the limit. You can see it has extracted all the years. So this is just, I mean, something that you can use to maybe you want to extract something from a, a string or a number from a series of something that is a 
text or a, this thing. You just want to extract something from it. So you just need to know the logic that you want to use, know your delimiter. You can also do it in such a way that you can count. Okay, I want to count, extract from maybe character number four to character number seven. Extract that for me and give me in a new column. So that's just something I just thought you might need it when you are doing transformation one time or the other. So it's something that you should know that is can is possible with with um, Power BI. So you can try that. We are not really using it, but you can try it just so that you know it and you can practice it. You might need it sometime when you are doing your own your own practice. But for me, I would just delete that step. But you can try it when you get it and you see how it works. And you can delete this step also. Hello. Yeah, please. Please, I just tried it. All right. Each time I click on the extract and I try to choose um, an option, um, it just disappears. Like I'm unable to select. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you do you mind sharing your screen? Okay, it has stopped. My system is acting up. Yeah, so Power BI, Power BI takes a lot of um, processing power. So sometimes you need a system that is um, that is fast for some things. But, but you have it now, right? Yes. All right, all right. Does anybody have any question regarding that? All right, so I, I guess we we'll move on now. So those are those are basic. I mean, there are many other, many numerous other transformations that we can do on Power BI. Many transformations. In fact, some people don't even bother to do any cleaning on Excel again. They just come and do all their cleaning on Power BI because it's possible. So I just wanted to show you, like, there are many I did not touch. You can create an index. You can duplicate column. You can create a conditional column. So that means, oh, I can create a column. For example, maybe I have a list of numbers. And I can say, okay, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a data that has to do with, for example, students in an exam. And I can say, oh, I want to put their grades based on what they score. So, you know, from 70 is A, between 60 and, I mean, between 60 and 70, and 69 is B, all of those things. You use a conditional column for that. It will just create a new column that will just do that based on the condition that you set. So, all of those things are possible with, with, uh, with, um, with what's it called? They are possible with the um, Power Query here. So you can do a lot of transformation. You can transpose, you know, you can pivot, you can do a lot of things. I can't, if, if we do that, we will not go into the other parts of the class. So I just touch the basic ones that people use mostly. Now, finally, before we leave this, this page and go to our, to our dashboard where we can start creating reports, um, I want to I want to show something. If you observe also for each row, there is a there is a uh, what's it called? There is something beside it. All of this, for example, row ID you can see one two three. Other ID you can see ABC. Other date you can see calendar. So all of this just suggests to us that that is the data type for elements in that row. So if for uh, for any reason you go through your I mean columns, if you go through your columns. And you see that oh a particular column has the wrong data type you can just easily change it yeah for example poster code now this poster code let's see if you click on it you can see it's the decimal number but really poster code is just a number we do we are not going to do any addition subtraction based on poster code we are not doing any modification it's just a number so i can decide to say okay i want that poster code to just be text because i'm not doing any aggregation on it so the best data type for it would be like the way we would have done it in SQL would be uh, maybe MVACA because it's not supposed to be int at all because you are not doing any you are not calculating poster code. Since like poster code phone number, you don't need to do any calculation on them. So the best data type for them would be MVACA. So for this one, I can just decide to say, okay, this poster code is decimal. Let me change it. So you just come here, the this thing beside it, and I can click and I can say, okay, I want it to be text, which is like so since we're not doing any calculation on it and it's so it's always safe to run through all your columns and make sure that they're in the right um, data type make sure they're in the right data type so let me go through again row id now for row id i know it's a number but really are we doing any addition subtraction we're not doing any mathematical 
this thing on the account. It doesn't make sense if I say I want to add this real ID to this real ID. So it's just better we leave it as, as text. That's the best data type that. It's. Of course, you can leave it as a number, but sometimes it's just better I leave it as text because you're not doing any calculation on it. So I can come here and say I want to change this one. Next. So it's just safe to, before you leave here, just run through all your columns and make sure that they are in the right, um, they are in the right data type. Other ID is this one. Other dates should be a date, which is normal. If you, sometimes it might come in, in text, so you can easily just change the date. So if you just detect the data type, you can look at it and correct it to the right thing. So let's just look. Accessories, product name, sales. So this is what this is in decimal. What this is in profits. So I, I guess all of them are, they are, they are all good. Remaining, I don't need to change anything. They are all good. So that's just that's just something to look out for. That okay, you can change the data type here to what suits you. So if you don't change it properly. For example, if this money was in, if this money was in maybe text and you don't change it, by the time you go to Power BI like the dashboard and you want to do aggregation, it will just be giving you error. And you will not know that, oh, the error is because I did not change it to the right data type. You have to see come back here, change it. So it's just better to, once you've done all your transformation, just a final check, check the various data type, make sure they're in the right format and, um, and you are good to go. So if you have gone all of this and you are at this step, you've made all your corrections, this is your final table that you want. Everything is consolidated here. So you can just do your final step, which is come to home, see close and apply. That means you're telling me close Power Query, then apply this transformation that I've done here, apply it to Power BI. When I click close and apply, close and apply, it closes this guy. It applies all the changes. You see now that global superstore will come up here now. The new table, that final table that we did. Making those changes. Yes, have it. This is our global superstore here. So now, um, since we have everything here, we've consolidated it into like one. One, date, one table. I have the option of deleting these guys, or if I don't want to delete it, I can hide it. So it depends on anyone you want to do, but me, I'm not deleting it, I'll just hide it. So if I want to hide it, if you hover over here, you see hide. So I'll just hide everything. Since I'm not, I've already collected what I need from them, I don't just want to delete. If I delete it, it doesn't affect my, it doesn't affect my, what's it called? If I delete it, it doesn't affect my final global superstore, but I just love to leave it and hide. I hide all of these guys. I know what I'm working with. It's clear to me. And um, yes, you are keeping all of them. This is my, this is what I, if I come here to data, So you see on data, it's still showing everything. But this is the table we're working with, Global Superstore. So I click on Global Superstore. You can see it now, everything is here. This is my, this is my table, my final table. That I want to start creating reports on. So yes. So let's go on now. Now we have our final table. I want to start creating reports. There are many approaches to it. Many people just want to start doing diagram start putting diagram and everything but i i always prefer to do like i said i always tell my students that they should do the groundwork first because that's the best way you can um you can get the best of your data and that's how you can work fast so for this global superstore now if you look at it from this point what are the things we want to the next thing you have to do is what are the things you want to report on so for the business, this report, this is what they're giving you as a data analyst. They're saying create a report. What are the things you want to report on? What are the things you want to show? So, for example, I want to show the number of sales that was done, 
number of sales that was done. Let me write that down. I want to show. I want to show the number of sales. I want to show the total amount that was sold. Total amount sold. So number of sales, I mean count of sales. I want to show total amount. Um, I also want to show um, total profits, which is something that, that should be measured by the business. I mean, all the things that you need, that you know that bring insight to the business, that will tell them how their business is performing at this point in time. You want to show it. I also want to show, maybe you have a shipping department. You want to show total um, shipping costs. Um, say, for example, you have a um, total shipping cost. What again can we show? Um, let's just work with this for now. So I said we want to show four things. Number of sales for the business. We want to show um, total amount that was sold, like total amount that we, what we, what we sold. We want to show total uh, profits. We want to show total shipping costs. And let's say we want to show the total quantity of goods that was sold. Total quantity of goods that was sold. So these are the things that probably are measurable insights for the business that we might want to show. So how do we go about it? This is where I introduce us to the part that I was talking about where I said measures. So remember I said measures are like formulas in Excel, meaning like for all of these things that we want to aggregate together now, measures are things we can write that can help us aggregate them together. So measures are like, um, Measures are like um, writing formulas that would help give a description, a, a, um, a numerical description of your business, writing those type of formulas, or just transforming your data to provide a particular insight. You use measures to do it. So there are many like formulas that we can use for all we want to do, but I will just show us a few so that, um, so that the time, get to know more. When you know what you want to do, you can also find out the measure that, that can do what you want to do and you get it. So let's do our first measure. So to do to do a measure, this is how I like to do it. You can just come here and click. You can see new measure. But I don't like to do it because, because for, for organization, for organization purpose and for um, to, to not confuse people so that you're not confused, I like to put all my measures in what is something like a table. So this is how I do it. I go to insert. I come. Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. Not insert. I come to enter data. So this enter data is like I want to give do a new table. But I just come and I put measures. So it's like I want to create a table that will store all my measures. So I load it. Just to go over that again. I want to create a table where I store my measures. So I came to enter data and I just named the table that showed up. I just named it measures. So now I have my measures here. You can see. Just to create that um, separate this thing and delete this column. Because if I do. Uh, This one measure. Right. I'm sorry, I am lost again. All right, find you. So, what I'm doing is, do you understand what I what I said? I um, want to create measures. You understand what I mean? No. So I think I lost you where. Oh my God. Um, close and apply. My system like just went off. Yeah, so I'm close, back. After close and apply, you have something like this, yeah? You have like a page like this. Um. Yes. Okay, so you can see on your right, you see Global Superstore, you see all those tables, right? Yes. So what I did was I said, since we've consolidated all the data into one table, this okay. is Final Global Superstore. I don't need all those other ones again. So what I just did, I selected on all those other ones, you see these three ellipses. So I just yes. selected them and I did hide. So I just started hiding all of them because I don't need them for. 
thing. So they okay. don't it. So after doing the height for everything, so what I just had left was my global superstore alone that was showing. Yes. Okay. So now I said we want to now start bringing insight to our business. Remember, our report is supposed to be for maybe top management or a particular department. And yes. based on the data that we have that we can see here, we can see that um, it's the sales data that was shown. It's just like a sales data for a particular superstore. So we want to report on that. So I asked, what were, what were the metrics that we want to report on? So take for example, we want to we want them to know the number of sales. Want them to know the total amount, the total profits, you know, total shipping costs, things like that that will bring insight to the business. So I said to be able to get to aggregate these um, various me uh, metrics of the business, that will be now bringing measures. And I mentioned earlier that measures are like formulas in Excel. So what they do is more like they just, um, it's just like putting a formula. So for example, you write a measure, this is your, this is your data. So I want to know the total number of sales, just like in Excel. If you want to know the total, you just write a formula and say, oh, total of sales so will give me all the total here. I want to know the total of quantity, total of quantity. I write some, a formula that will calculate the total here, you know, total profit that will calculate. So we can do the same thing. So we do that in, in Power BI with what we call measures. And I was saying for measures, I want it to be organized so you are not, um, you are not confused. So, sorry, are you still with me? I'm, I'm here, but I still do not understand. Okay, what, where, where, where's your issue? Just, just let me know. Like, I, I, I think what you said, you're talking about measures. Okay, so for measures, right, measures are, they are, as a data analyst or as a Power BI analyst, what you're okay. trying to do is you're trying to give insight to the business. Okay. So when you've cleaned your data, you've transferred the data, you look at your data and you ask yourself the question, okay, what insights, what report am I trying to give to this business? I mean, as a business owner, if someone else to do a report for you, what are the things that you want to, what are the things you want to see in that report? Of course, you want to see how much you have sold within a certain time. You want to see the quantity you have sold. You want to see your profit, things like that, right? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm saying to get those those things, to be able to calculate, okay, how much you sold, how much the quantity is for all of this, that is where measures come in. That's what we're writing measures for. It's just like saying you're writing a formula that is calculating that thing for you and you're storing that formula somewhere. So in your Excel now, for example, if you want to do a particular column, if you want to get the maybe you want to get the sum of certain columns and you put it in another cell. What you do is you just write sum and you select the columns and to give you the total value in another cell. So that's what is very similar to what measures is doing. Measures is just helping you to be able to aggregate um, the metrics of your business into a particular place so that you can dice and slice that matrix into various things. Okay. So um, when we start, you understand it better. So okay. for example, now, and now say, let's do, let's start and start, let's start creating our measures. So I said, the first thing I want to do, this is how I want, it's not, this is not casting stone. You can come here directly and say new measure. But if you do it that, that way, you will be confused because everything, if you have a lot of columns, everything will just be lumped up together. And you don't know where, oh, this measure I created, where is it? And all of those things. So that's why I said, I love to always come and, um, puts all my measures in a new table, in a, in a unique table that I call measures. And to get to that table, let me go back. To get to that table, what I did was, so this is what I had. To get to that table, what I did was I came to enter data here. Like I was creating a new table. You can see it's showing create a new table by typing or pasting in new content. I came to enter data and I just named this data, this table, sorry. I named this table measures. And I said load. So you can see it brought out this my table measures. I'll rename it later, but this is what it brought out. Now what I'm doing now is I want to create all my measures, all my formulas, maybe because I'm saying measures, all my formulas, things that will measure, just like the name measures. I want to create them inside this table so that it's, in, it's organized for me. So what I will do is 
now I want to create my first measure. More like I want to answer questions about my business and I want to use formulas to answer them. So what am I saying? For example, the first thing I want to know is, okay, over this period, over this, for this data that we have, I can see what is the total sale that we've done as a business for this, for the data set that they've given us, what is the total sale that this business has done? So to answer that question, what I just need to do is I will come to this ellipsis here and I click on new measure. I click on new measure. When I click on it, it brings out like a formula bar for me. You can see this is very similar to what you have in Excel. So I can call this, I can call this um, total sales. That means the sales we've made as a business. And I mean, we we'll now put the formula. The formula for totals to, to calculate, I mean to add a particular column because I want to add all the sales now. The formula is, I'll just type sum. You can see it's very similar to Excel. So sum, so what is it asking? It's telling me column name. That means which column do you want to sum to give this, to give this, um, to give this, um, what's it called? Which column do you want to sum to give the final answer? So I say under global superstore, that's the table. You can see from here, you can see global superstore B, global superstore B, it's showing all those tables that we did before. But what I want is global superstore. So under global superstore now, you can see the table global superstore. I have all my columns. You can see my category, city, customer ID, all the columns that we have. So I can just look for sales. Is this sales that I want to add? I click it and I press enter. So it has calculated it, my total sales. Sorry. Just a minute, please. Type that again. Sum. Sum. I come to Global Superstore Sales and I click Enter. So it has calculated that sales for me now. Ah, my stuff is hanging there. All right. So it has okay. calculated that sales for me now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Sorry. Who? Is... Hi, Favor. Are you with me? Yes, I am. So um, I'll go over that again. So let me just break it down for you so that you understand. You know how to use your formulas in Excel, right? Yes. All right. So for example, in Excel now, if you want to, if you have a table and maybe it's a sales data, for example, and you want to know what is the total sales that was done, you just write your normal formula and just say, oh, sum, sum, um, this, you pick the first um, column, and you pick, I mean, the first cell, you pick the cell you want to stop at, and it don't show you the sum, right? Yeah. So it's similar thing we're doing here. So what we want to do, what we're saying here is simply, we're saying in this global superstore data set now that we've done, we can see this is the sales. This is the sales here. This is the sales. And we are saying we want to find the sum of all this column. We want to find the sum of everything. That means everything that was sold within this, for the period that this data covers, everything that was sold, we want to find it. So what we are doing now is we're not saying we're writing a measure for it. Now this is our measure. Came here and I selected new measure. And I said, okay, the, the um, formula to calculate for a particular column is sum. So I just say total sales. Total sales. I'll put it two because I have one already. Total sales is equals to, right? And I said sum. So it brings out this formula for me. I just clicked on it. So what this is telling you is, okay, so which column do you want to sum now? And I said the column I want to sum is global superstore sales column. In global superstore. So this is global superstore. I go down and I go to sales, global superstore, the table, 
Then the column in Global Superstore, that's sales, and I click on it, and I just press enter. So it has brought it out. So if you want to confirm it, I just select it like this. And you can see it's showing me the sales. It's telling me it's about nine point something million that we did for sales. So that's our formula for we've written, we've gotten our formula for the sales that we did. Let's go, let's go to another one now. So after I've done, maybe I've gotten the formula, I've calculated my total sales. I can say, okay, I want to calculate total profit that the, that the business like made. I will do the same thing here. I will come to new measure, click on it. It will bring out the option to type my formula. I can say, okay, this formula will be for me, formula will be total profit. I'll do the same thing. I want to add the profit column together. So I'll just do some. I click on it and I go to Global Superstore. I just scroll till I see the column that I want. So I want profits. So this is profit. And I select enter. So you can see my total profit. I can check. Okay, did I have a good figure? Let me see. Sorry, let me delete this one. I just click on total profit. You can see my total profit is about, if I hover over it, it's about 1.1 1 .1 million thereabouts. So what I'm just saying is all of the things that you want to measure, all the things that you want to measure for the business, you want to measure the sales, you want to measure the profit, you want to measure all of those, all those columns you want to add up together to give a summary of what has happened in the business. This is what measures are for. So, one of the formulas that you can use in measure is sum, and we're using the sum now. That's what I'm using it to do. Let me do an, another example for the sum. Take for example, we want to get total shipping cost. The same thing, I come to new measure, and I say total shipping. That's the name of my measure, total shipping cost, right? I do sum. So what am I adding? I'm doing some of shipping cost column in my global superstore data sets. And I do enter. So I have it, so I can test. Did it write, did it, <coughs> did it give me the right thing? So when I just click shipping cost, you can see it's already showing me. My shipping cost is about 1.5 million. So um, that's how you do the sum. So just for for the sake of practice in the class here, we, the last one that I wanted to do is total quantity. So let's try total quantity and let's compare the values that each of us is getting, please. And if you have any question, please, um, please um, just if you get this part, if you understand measures, the visualization is the easiest part. So the part that we've done earlier, that transformation and these measures, those are the very, very important part. That's why if that's those are the two things I'm able to achieve today. I, I think I've not done a 50% of what I need to show you guys. Because everything about visualization is, I think is artistic. It's more of okay, someone that is a graphic designer will probably do well in visualization because the person can miss colors and do all of those other things. But the logic behind it, the formulas, writing those formulas, those are the main that's the main bone of contention. So that's why I want us to spend time and grab this formula very well. So let's try that quantity. Um, let me know what we're having. Let's compare values together. If you have questions, um, you can ask. If you are lost, you can indicate so that I can find you. So that we'll be together on the same page before we go. I actually am lost. Oh, God. Okay. Can you share your screen? Let me, let's work together. Let me and you work together. Can you share your screen? Is there another person that is lost, please? Is there another person? Tohib, are you fine? Um, Toby, wow. are you fine? Yeah, I'm good. Just checking the values. All right. Are they following how, how, how is it going? Yeah, I think I'm fine too. All right. So, Fifo. Share your screen, please. I think I'm sharing my screen. I am so lost. I understand you. Oh, okay. 
So now, but you understand what what measure is meant to achieve, right? Yes. You understand what measure? Okay. So now to write to do a new measure, this is what I'm saying. I can see that you clicked from what from what I see on my on your screen. I can see that there's a measure that is showing on your right. There's a measure yeah. that is showing an error. Yeah. Now you can see that I know that you created that measure because you clicked the three dots beside Global Superstore. So what I was what I was trying to achieve, you can do this and it will work. But what I'm trying to achieve is that if you create, imagine you already have this number of columns that is plenty on that Global Superstore. You now start creating many measures inside. It will confuse yeah. it even more. So you can delete that. Delete from model. Yes. Awesome. Now, um, go go scroll up, scroll up a little bit. Close like collapse that global measure. Yes. So now in these measures that you have now, fine. That's why I say you should have a new column for measures. So what you will do now is, um, on measures to right click. I mean, click on those. Yes, new measures. Now it has brought the point of formula for you. This is where you type your formula. Now the next thing you do is what do you want to name your measure? Do you want to do which measure do you want to do now? Let's let's think of one. Which one do you want to do? Let's say you want to do total sales for that particular data set. So you can just name it to something that you understand. So you can just name it total sales. No, 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 no. Go back, do the same thing that you did, the same step that you did before. Collapse everything. No, no, no. Oh, New measure. New measure. Yes. So this place that is blinking down, where you write formulas in Excel, just like yes, yeah, that's where you rename it. You can rename it like say total sales equals to. No, 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 no. Go back. Erase everything. You are giving the measure a name. Erase it. Erase it. Clean to the end. Yes. So you are giving the measure the name that you want now. So you can call it total sales, right? Equals to. So that's yes. So that's the name that you are giving the measures. You know that this measure you're writing is a measure for total sales. Now to get the total sales, that means you do a sum of the sales column in that global superstore data set. So you just do equals to sum. Right, so you can click on that sum now that is showing. Exactly. So what is it showing up? It's showing column name. That means what is telling you is, we go and pick the particular column that you want to, um, that you want to sum, that you want to add. So what you do now is now look for global superstore sales column among these options that are listed down. Among these ones, yeah. Yes, yes. So you scroll up. Be careful because you can see uh, here. So global superstore sales is in alphabetical order. So you see it after. Yes, go down, go down. Yes, sales. Press enter. So you can see the measures has changed now. On your right, you can see now it's total sales. So just come and click that box just to confirm that you have a value there. Come and click that box. Yes, click the box beside it. This yes, so you can oh. see your total sales is out. Oh. So the same process you can do for profit, the same process you can do for quantity, just to do total total of each. So for every time I, I will just keep um going to new measures. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Because okay. Again, what you want to achieve is for the sales now, you might want to tell them, okay, based on these sales. This is how much you are selling in various cities. This is how much you are selling in various countries. This is how much you are selling in, you know, various. This, this is the profit you are making in this city. This is the profit you are making. That's what you want to show the business at the end of the day. So it's good that you do all these measures for your sales, for your profit, all the quantifiable um, elements of the business. You do it. For this one, now you can do like total profit and just do the same thing. Not global superstar, uh, global superstar. Not A, does it not the global superstar, the final one? Should be up, scroll up. Yes. 
a look for profit there. No, you have gone to B. You can see there's global, that global superstar A and B is showing, but you need to be careful. So this one? Yeah, and global superstar. So now you look for, no, no, no. You look for, exactly. You now look for profit. Whatever you call it. I don't know what you call it. Sales profit now. I, is that what you call it? I think so, yes. Oh yeah, select that one now. Sales profit. <laughs> So you see it's there now so you just keep do the same thing for for shipping and quantity that's all we did same um, process. Yes. so i'm going i'm going to do again for shipping and then quantity yes 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 um, so that's just how you use the the sum formula like the measure if you want to do a sum of a particular column that's how you use it i'm just showing how you use it okay there are, that, there are other ones that that we can do so maybe you can just um complete that after now so i'm doing shipping and quantity and what else so those those are the ones that you that you, you want to do if you want to do other things you can look okay. at the data and get the insights that you want that's that's fine thank you yes i'll stop sharing now all right is is every other person on the same page we can go through the steps together if we are all good so I just want to introduce another measure. So one measure that you use very well, that we've done is sum. You use sum a lot when you are doing Power BI because you are adding things. Sum a lot. Another measure we use is count. So sum has told you, oh, for this data set, though, this is the amount that we sold all together. Now count tells you number. So or it's more like tells you quantity or the number of entries that we have in that particular data set. So, for example, you can make a sale of 100,000 Naira, but everything that you sold was just five products or five, the quantity of product that was sold was just five products. So, count just helps you to say, okay, well, what amount of products generated this amount of sales? More like it. You can apply it to various to various distances. So, for example, if we're doing maybe you want to know your number of customers that came to Prada, or something we should do, self number of customers. What you want to know? Okay, this total number of sales that we did. How many customers gave us this amount of sales? Let me see my screen, please. Oh. Okay. No. Okay, should be up now. So if you want to know this total amount of sales that we've done now, that is about um, 9.545 million, you want to know how many customers are responsible for these sales, the number of customers responsible for these sales. So it's easy to say, oh, how can I identify, sorry, um, where is that? So it's easy to say, how can I identify the customers that give me these sales? Now, it's easy for me to come and say, hmm, I can count them. I want to count the number of customers. But if you look at it, right? Where is that customer's place now? Yes, I want to explain something to us. If you look at it, please, everybody follow. If you look at it, ideally, that the customer came today does not mean the customer will not come tomorrow. So that means a customer can appear twice. A customer can appear twice. So for this data set now, look that, okay, what is the, these are the questions you ask. What is the way I can identify a unique customer that I know that, okay, well, this is the number of customers that give us this number of sales. These are the number of customers we have as a business currently. That's where our account comes in. And you know that in normal, I mean, normally, what we have here, we can either count our customer ID or we count our customer name. But, for the business, customer ID is what is unique because two customers can have the same name. What to differentiate them is their ID. So I can have another Bobby Trafton that has a different ID. I can have another person that is Joy Daniels that is not necessarily exactly the same person. So what identifies each customer uniquely is the customer ID. I mean, we would have known that from SQL, just like your what we do with our primary key. So it's more like the primary identifier or the unique identifier for each customer is the ID. 
So if we want to know the number of customers that have patronized this business, that means we will have to do a count of the customer ID. And also, because um, the customer might have come more than once, you don't want to count the same customer twice. You want to just count them only once because, I mean, it's just one customer. No matter the number of times that the person has come to patronize us, it's just one customer. So to get the count of customers that have come to this business, we use um, um, a, a measure called distinct counts. Now note that this distinct count I'm saying does not apply to only customers. If you want to know the number of products that were sold, you can or the number of orders, you can do a distinct count of the other ID. So distinct count just says, okay, I want to know as per number, not sum. I want to know number of things. That's when you use the distinct count. And you use the distinct count because you don't want to count anyone anything twice. There's a formula that is for that is called count. But what count to do is to just count the number of rows and return that to you. But distinct count, on the other hand, will help you identify unique customers or unique orders or unique products. So now let's apply that distinct count for customers. So I want to know the customer that have come that has patronized our business within this period, the number of customers that have come. So what you just do is you go back to um, this, your page, you want to write a new measure and you write a new measure. So this is my new measure now. What I want to do is I want to do our number of customers. I can say number of customers. I say equals to. Remember, I said it's distinct count. So is a smart function. So when I just start typing distinct, it gives me my distinct counts. Now, this is the rule for every formula. Once you click on the formula, it just tells you the next step. So it says count the number of distinct values in a column. So what is telling you that, okay, you want to do a distinct count. Which column do you want to count? So I can just come and go to Global Superstore. And I say, I want to count customer ID. I'm counting customer ID because that is what uniquely identifies the customer. I won't count customer name because two customers can have the same name, but two customers can have the same um, ID. So I click on customer ID and I press enter. So I can see my number of customers here. Check. Let me check the value. Sorry. I do my number of customers. You can see it has brought out of customers. I have one five eight nine customers. So what this has done for me is although I have um, a lot of records here. Yeah. Although I have a lot of records, what this is saying is of all these records that I have, the total number of customers that came to my business within this period, they are just that number that should. Um, they are just about one five to one five one thousand five hundred twenty nine customers. You can change this visualization so that it makes more sense. There's something the one I like to use to confirm my existing is what I I use um cards. So you can see it's telling me I have one five eight nine customers. So I, how I changed to cards, I just selected the the visualization. This is showing a bar chart, and I just came to these visualizations and I just looked for cards. This is cards. I mean, it changes. It's showing you your thousands. So that's how you do it. So now I've got my number of customers. I can say, okay, just to go over this formula again with us. Let's do a um, number of, we want to know, okay, if this total, these are the total number of customers. I mean, total number of customers that came. I want to know, okay, the total number of orders that I had within this period. The same thing. I'll just come here and I do a new measure. And I do distinct um i do number of products oh sorry number of orders that was not what to do number of orders and i say is a distinct count right it's not telling me what do you want to count distinctively i want to count my order id that'll give me my total number of orders 
Then I press OK. Gives me the formula. So I can put that here. Select the number of others. You can see it's giving me this value. I say, okay, let me put it as a card. So it's telling me I had 25k others. Are we together? Hello, guys. Are we together? Hello. Yeah, I think it's fine. It's fine. That's one. I need the other people to, to follow me. People, how is it going? Did you get this one? I'm still working on it, but yeah, I, I think I can figure this out myself. Right. And Tohib, I guess we're on the same page. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. How about Tudi? Uh, try. Right. Awesome. Um, um, again, the second Tobi. You are not saying anything since. Yes, it's fine. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Um, who am I missing? Rufemi. Yes, sir. Are, are we good? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, awesome, awesome. Ah, I'm not happy for this class. Um, Adela, please, are we, are we, are we together? Adela, are we together? Response. All right, so I, I guess we're we're fine. I'm sure even if you you are getting maybe there's a little bit of confusion, you can always I'm on the group. You can always ask me. I'm ready to get on a call with anybody at any time just to make sure you understand it. And if you watch the video again, you always get it right. Uh, that's one thing I yeah, can. Uh, trust me, I'll, I'll be reaching out to you on the group and next because this power BI is is one that most came most came um, about, and I think so far it has not given me. Edit where SQL good, so I think I'm going to enjoy working with it a lot. Uh, many people, uh, that, that's what happens. So many people see SQL and want to run, and but I just advise most times don't buy Power BI by the sweeter, don't neglect your SQL because the rules, what happens most times is you can, you, you might see once in a while, you might see opportunity to do once in a while, you might see opportunity to do. And just power BI, but most times they tell you have a skilled experience because what some of them want you to do is they want you to be able to query your information from SQL, write your SQL query that can now translate and uh, now translate it to power BI and create a report. So power BI. Yeah, is, I mean it's not it's not like I'm going to neglect uh, SQL, but the power BI for me looks like the light at the at the end of the tunnel. Yes, yes, because, yes. Because yes. that SQL looks like a looks like a long tunnel, but. I'm, sure I'm, going to get, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm going to get a grasp of it eventually, but I'm enjoying yes. this class so far. Sure, sure, you get it. This is this is more visual, visual, so you enjoy. I see what you are doing as you are doing it and everything. So I understand, understand. I'm glad everybody is, is fully. So um, once we have all of this now, what I just want to show us now is just a quick example of how we can apply these measures that we've done. How we can apply it to creating charts now because now you've done your measures so your measures are just basically answering questions general questions about your data what's the total profit what's the total sales what's the total shipping cost what is number of orders what's the number of um, number of customers what's the number of um number of products you can do that one on your own you can just you can write it down you can attempt number of products right once you have all of those questions answered you have done your work you have done your work. So what we just need to do now is we just start creating our charts. So this is how you create your charts now. Now I'll delete all of these guys. You have these measures. Now, this is your visualization. In this visualization pane, you have different charts that you can use, and you can edit your various charts. 
we do more of this editing maybe during our tutorial tutorial classes because i think that's just more of design look and feel kind of thing i want to focus on giving you the real stuff in the in the course of the class so now that we've done these are measures how do we now apply these measures so take for example i want to show i have my total number of um, profit now i have my total number of sales but now i want to show it, it 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 can make sense if I say okay, let me show my total number of sales. So for example, I click, I want to show my total number of sales properly. I can say, let me pick a card. This is a card, a card visualization. I click on card. You can see that it has popped up here. I cannot say for this card, I want to show total what sales. I just click total sales. That show me my total sales. You can see total sales. I'm performing and I reduce it. Right? I click out. Do all the editing later. I can now say, oh, I want to show another what card. And in this card, I want to show what total profits. I've clicked the card. I come here and I just click total profits. You can see this is my total profits. So this is already telling a story for the business. Telling a story that okay, oh, we made 9.48 million sales. This is the profit we made out of it. I can now say, okay. What is now? Um, I click outside. You have to click outside. I say I want to click another card again. I say what is the total number of customers that we had for this particular trap, this particular sales and profit? I can click number of customers. You can see that this is already telling the business owner and inside of their business already. It's telling them what's what the, I mean what's what their business is how it's performing. So one five customers gave us nine points. Or eight million. So if you can push our customers to times two, maybe we can actually double the sales. We are already answering business questions. Let's do one more. I can come and say, okay, for this card, um, let's see. I want to do my total number of orders. I click here. So I have to refer to orders. Oh, awesome. So this is already giving an insight to the business. Now I cannot say now that I have this thing, what? Is the demographic that made this 9.48 million sales meaning i want to slice these sales to see like what are the what are the things that made me like the the people the country um the states the gender the age group that gave me this amount of sales that's when insight is coming because that's when that's when you be able to tell that oh we can do this better we can do that better so to do that i click out I can say, okay, I want it to be on a, for example, a, a bar chart. I click bar chart, right? That's come up. I'm just expanding it so that we can see. So now in this bar chart, I'm looking at it. Wait, let me go back again. Sorry. I wanted us, I wanted us to see something very important. So you can see by the time when I click bar chart, please observe this, this place below. When I click back that I click bar charts and you see it changed Y axis X axis legend. So it's just it's just helping us see what you can add. So bar charts, Y axis, X axis. So what it's saying is what do you want to add on your X axis? What do you want to add on your Y axis? Now I want to do total sales. I want to um describe or I want to slice my total sales by various various um, elements of the business, various things. So I click on total sales now. You can see it's showing me my total sales, right? Bar. And I say I want to see my total sales by say, for example, I open this global superstore set and I say I want to see my total sales by country. So after clicking total sales, I come here and I click country. I click country. Can you see? Let me expand it. It has shown you that total sales by country. So what this is telling you is this 9.48 million. No, this is how much United States did. This is how much Australia did. This is how much France did. This is how much China did. So you are getting the insights that comp that summarizes up to this 9.48 million. You are slicing it to see it country wise. I can do another one now and say I want to do um column stack charts. And I say um for this same total sales, I go back and click my total sales measures. You see why I say it's important to do your measures first because what you just did now, you just be selecting. That's what is left. For the same total sales, I want to see it by, say, um, what other thing can I see it by? By the category of the products that were sold. 
category of products. Right click category. You can see it's showing me okay of this 9.48 million. This is amounts that fall under technology category. This is the amount that fall under furniture. This is the amount that fall under office supplies. I can say okay, good. Let me do a pie chart now. For this pie chart, I can say I still want to see inside of my total sales. We'll talk about how you can arrange your data to tell better story, but I'm just giving you some of how it works. For this pie chart, I still want to see my total sales. I can come again and pick total sales, right? I cannot say um I want to see it by let's say by sub by the sub category. Let's see. Let's see how that will come up. This is not nice because there are a lot of subcategories, so it's not coming out very well. Um, let's see. By let's try region. You can see for each region is telling you, okay, this is so for me glass. You can see that oh, this purple is what is central. So central region are making out most sales and everything. So I mean, you already give me more insights to this. So now the business can tell. Okay, this is what is making up the 9.48 million sales. Oh, we're doing very well in this country. We should increase our sales in social country because we are doing poorly. So this is this is the category that is moving the most. So that means we can, if we want to market, since we already have market for this one, we can market more this category so that we have more people, you know, buying this category. We can do things about oh, you know, just various insights from the business. So this is where your other analytical skills where you can begin to draw inside when you begin to see charts like this you are able to start drawing inside for the business you can do the same thing for customers you can say okay let me do another one for customers so for customer let's say i want to do a this type of chart i want to see my customers so what i'll just speak is i'll go to total customers total of customers yes right i can say okay i want to see these customers by country Baha, united states is where i have the most customers mexico i have many customers in mexico but my sales in mexico is down why that means maybe mexicans are not buying a lot so you now start asking questions like how do we get since we already have a lot of customers there how do we get more people to buy you know those are the questions you now start telling the business that you can post to them that in a place you already have a large customer base what you just need to do is probably more marketing to get more people to buy or maybe run discounts so that more people will come and buy more products or you know do maybe customer rewards so that since we already have a large customer base there you know and other places you can look that oh we have um less customer here so maybe we should do more marketing to get more people to buy our products so you see that we're already getting a little bit of insight into the data um we can do okay let's look at um Profits. Let's look at something on profit. So like, let's say I want to do my profits. I can click outside and say, okay, um, let's do a donut chart. So this donut chart now, I come here and I say, I want to get my total profits, but I want that total profits to be sliced based on region. So I can do it, see. You can see my total profit by region. You can see, or let's even do, let me not do region. Let me total profit by say category. So you can also tell, oh, okay, this product is giving the most profit. That's technology. Of course, it's the one that is giving the most sales. So it's supposed to give the most profit. You know, office supplies. So you can also see that office supplies, what you can see, office supplies is giving me my next uh, most profit. What is my this sold product? Furniture that I sold more is giving me less profits. Okay, as a business, you want to close down our furniture business and just focus on technology and office supply. So these are the like ideas and questions you can come up with that can give insight to the business and they can begin to make a various decision. That's why business intelligence. So it's not just by showing the charts. You need to be able to answer questions and draw conclusions from the questions you are trying to answer. When you see a chart, you compare it to this other one. Okay, maybe I can do this as a business. I can do. So, I believe we're getting the gist of it now. If you just do what we've done and you just play around the charts, you begin to see how um, how you can how you can create charts that that make sense.
Now I spoke about something that is very interactive. Power BI is very interactive, meaning that if as a business user now, this is a tool of this one thing that makes Power BI unique. You are not just seeing the chat, you can adjust the chat to what you want to see. So for example, I just look and say, hmm, United States, we're having a lot of sales there. Let me even see what United States entails going on. Let me see the details gone. So I'll just come and click on United States here. Can you see? Every other thing in the chat has changed. So it's just showing me everything as it relates to the United States right now. So this is the total sales for United States. This is the profit, this is the customer. This is the technology, furniture. In fact, you can see that all of them are doing almost the same thing. So it's just showing you how interactive Power BI is. If I select another country, um, okay, I click United States back, get returns back to the format they sent. If I say, okay, I just want to see um, what technology is like, or what furniture is like in all the, in on all my charts. So I just click furniture here. You can see this amount I've made in furniture. This amount are sold in the United States furniture. You know, so you can see how the charts are interactive, how it's changing. When I click, it's changing, interacting with one another. No one chat is, is alone. I click France here. It's affected here, affected here. So that that's the beauty of Power BI, right? That one, the chats are interactive and you can answer more questions. As you're analyzing, trying to answer your questions, you can click and just know better and get more insights to your data. So yeah, so that is that is chats. Now, this same thing I've told you now that makes the chat interactive. There's one final thing I want to do in today's class before we call it, because I know it's like I've shared a lot of information. There's one last thing that I want to do in today's class that can do this same thing that we are doing. So while it switch to, you can easily click on one country and you can see the changes. You can also do a particular, um, a particular visualization that helps you do that. And that visualization is what we call slicer. It's what we call slicer. So this is the slicer here. This is the slicer visualization. Slicer. So if I click on slicer, right, you see it's bringing an empty pane. So what it's telling me is, add the field that I want to slice by. So take, for example, I want to slice by, say, markets. Or let me do something that I've already done before. Let's say I want to slice by country. So what I just need to do is I'll just come. Remember, you can only slice by, you can't slice by sales. You can't slice by profit. You can slice by things. So this sales, profit, cost, number of customers, or that they're like the facts of the business. So you can slice by things we can we call dimensions. So country, region, category, that is we can call like dimensions of the business. You can only slice by dimension. You can't slice by far. Because you can't say you want to slice 9.48 million by 1.09 million. Right? It doesn't make sense. So you can slice by dimension. So what I can do is, instead of coming here and I click United States and everything, I can just come and put in this slicer visual, I can come and put country. When I select country, you can see all the countries are showing. So if I want to pick a particular country, I can just pick, for example, I say Brazil. You can see the difference now. Before, take for example, let me pick a country that is here. So, for example, um, let's do Australia. This is why slicer is good. I click Australia on the chat itself, interactive chats. I click it. And it's, you see the way it, it disorganized my chat somehow. Even though it's giving me information, but it disorganized my chat somehow. Let me unselect it. And I come to this slicer now, and I click the same Australia. You can see how it presents the information. I can see everything I'm seeing in my page now is just Australia. So that's why it's better to approach your slicing and dicing from this angle using a slicer instead of just selecting it from the chat because it makes you, it gives you better insight. You can see more things and it's a better look and feel. So that's just how you use slicer. Um, you can decide to do another slicer. Um, select another one. Click out, select slicer. I can see, okay, I want to do a slicer for the things like, let me see, maybe like markets. Yeah, I think you can do for markets. I select markets. You can see Africa, Canada, other spaces, EU, US. So let's say based on the EU now. You can see this is how. So how does this help? Maybe your business is global. 
can decide that, oh, I, I've done one report, but I need to send the report to each region. So I can just decide that, oh, for EU, I'll extract it. This is the report that they need, and I'll send this report to them. So you don't need to start doing different report, different report. I've done one report. What I just need to do is I'll just slice it. If I want to get what is happening in Africa, I'll just slice it and I'll see it happening in Africa. So that's just the idea of the slicing. These are the major visuals that you use in, in um, Power BI desktop. So if you've gotten the transformation parts, you've gotten the uh the creating your measures you know how to uh, create those measures to um, get um things that you can aggregate that you uh, measure about your business creating chart is the easiest because you are just adding and removing clicking and removing some people will approach it by start creating the chart and then create measure but i like approaching it create your measures do all of those work once you just start you just start clicking and your charts start coming out beautiful like this and that thing you can do is um yeah, I think I was going to say, but basically, hey, another one I wanted to add. Sorry, I wanted to add another slider that is very, very important. Very important before we enter this class. So, don't slide for country, don't slide for market. You can also do a slicer for dates so that you are able to measure your business over time. So, this slider has come here, and I want to do for dates. So, all I just need to do is other dates, and I just put it here so you can see. It's showing me the date so I can decide to measure any type of any part of my business. I can say, okay, between 2012 and 2013, sorry, and 2013, ah, sorry, and 2013. Pick the month, pick the year. You to drill down to, even if you want to go down to a particular date, you can just drag this your date slider to a particular date. And you have what you want. So once you have this now, once you know all of this, you can do all of this. What you just need to do is, oh, I play around with charts. Okay, this chart will present the information better, you know? Or you play around with colors, or you just play around with design. But that is just the idea of Power BI Desktop. That is the idea of Power BI Desktop. We can see that it's visually appealing, right? But the work, the main work, is what you do back end, sort of, all those things that you got to do together. Once you can get that part together, come in here, you just drag and drop, select or select, and you have your visuals, and you can create visuals as and tell your story the way you want to tell it. Um, the only part that is missing now that I've not touched, touched because it's what I told, um, I said at least to remind me for next class. There's also another part called modeling because you notice all through our class, I touched on this, which is our report pane. I did a little bit on this. Uh, I showed us something around this, uh, this thing, but I've not done anything around here, which is modeling. But I will explain that in our next class with another data that will make a lot of sense. That will make it easy for us. But once we do that modeling, the same thing we did around the back end, the same thing we did in our Power Query, the same thing we did. So this is just the idea um, of Power BI. I think with that, it's safe to call it um, a day into this class. I know it's quite a lot. I would just advise, just rewatch the video. You don't necessarily have to be doing it step by step what I'm doing. If you do it, it's very advantageous for you. But please just rewatch the video because when you rewatch the video, there are many things that you didn't get that you will still get, get it better. The things that you don't understand, you understand. The things that you understand, you understand it better. Not, it's not, um, it does you more good to watch the video, right? You and if you have any questions, of course I'm on the group and you can always um you can always reach out to me. So please, with that, I've come to the end of all that I have for this first class. Is there any question? Did I lose anybody anywhere? Is there anything that anybody wants us to quickly run through? Thank you, Yomi. I enjoyed the class. Like you said, the video is where the work is. It, because the last 30 minutes of the class, I have to step out. So I've been commuting, but I know I've I'm, I'm not missed so much in the whole last 30 minutes. I'm going to go back to the video and just, just catch up in this last 30 minutes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other person?
Oh, by the way, I like to get feedback from my students because it just gives me an idea of knowing where they are, um, where I need to work on in the next class so that everybody, I mean, understands and gets value for their money. So um, if you if you all don't mind, I just need um, people to admit their mind. The class is already over for today. Just need people to admit their mind and just, okay, maybe there's an area that if I'm touching this with you, you need me to go by it again. You can just say that so that I will note that and maybe create something that will make us touch that area again. Oh, you me. Yeah. I also enjoyed the class. Um, any gray areas can be um, sorted with the video, but all right. Thank you. Can't, very much. can't, can't pinpoint any right now. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, I like, I like the delivery. Oh. Sorry, Toby. I like the delivery. It was fantastic. All right, all right, that's good. Thank you. I'm I'm glad everybody's understanding. Yeah, um, I, I really like understood and thank you for like finding me when I was lost. Yes, you like getting lost. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. The goal is for everybody to to get it done. I mean, that's the goal. So I I really appreciate everyone for being in class. Thank you for coming. Um, I hear that you guys have um, tutorials on Fridays, so um, my Fridays are kind of busy, but I'll try and and show up if I can. If not, this Friday, the next Friday, I'll definitely be there. I'll plan towards it. And also, that does not restrict you. You don't need to uh, keep your questions to Friday. If you're watching in the course of the week and you have a question, just um, type on the group and mention my name. Just put me, I would I would get back to you. And like I said, I still have students from previous sessions that still reach out to me. It's just the way I, I like to help people. So yeah, so I'll look forward to so yeah, I have to give an assignment. It's very important. <laughs> How could I forget? So your assignment is pretty simple for today. Yes. I just want you to genuinely start afresh. Everything we've done. Start afresh. Do all the bringing in data, um, transforming it, um, doing your measures, uh, append, um, merge, remove duplicates, remove nulls, all of those things that we did, just so that you don't forget, just redo it and get to the point that we got to in class today. You can do more, I would love it, but I want to be able to, I know you put some of your assignments, so I will contact me day for that. I want to be able to buy maybe Wednesday, in the course of the week, just go there and look at people's um look at people's what people came up with and just see that okay, you can get to the point where you are creating good visuals that are making sense, right? I'm not I'm not going for accuracy now. I'm going for understanding what we did and creating visuals that make sense. Accuracy is very important and we'll talk about it in the next class. But just understanding it, if you are not accurate. It means that you just did something that is not right. It doesn't mean that you did not get what you did. Maybe it's just a formula that is not right and everything, and it's easy to correct that. But getting the logic behind it is what is very important. So I need you to do everything we've done and get to the point that we are in class. And if you have any questions, just reach out to me in the course of the week. So that will be all from me. I don't know if um, Dave is here. Thank oh, you, Yamash. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I had the feedback, so I'm glad everybody enjoyed the class. Please, it's not enough to enjoy the class. It's not enough to say, oh, this is amazing, oh, this. In, in enjoying the class, it is also very important for you to, um, for you to practice. If you don't practice, you will forget. Thank God you're me, actually. So it's not like, oh, Lambda is just always beating on this thing. Yami just said it to you guys as well. If you if you think that because of everything you've done today, you understand, you know it, if you test it and don't do anything this week, by next week you'll forget every single thing that he has taught you. Every single thing. It's the way the human brain works. You, you just need to practice. Please, practice, practice, practice. It's, I'm not going to stop overflogging that because that's what you would use i asked for medium you know stories to be told i don't think there's anyone who 
initially started their data journey that did not one maybe one post at least have like a medium one medium post up just to show because these are the things you add to your portfolio when you're job hunting and these are the things these are the questions they will ask you even people that want to give you references if you have people outside they will ask you is there a place you have your work saved that i can look at it and see see what you've done because they believe that when they see that you know they'll be able to say oh okay this person can do the job so please don't stop at i understand it oh it was perfect it was this it was that please practice practice everything you've been taught today your sql videos are up the two of them are up watch the videos um when people come to me for sql um problems it makes me happy and the reason is because i i pride myself in being able to solve sql situations in in one hour two hours maximum so you can have access to someone like me and be struggling it's a shame if you go out and ask people and they tell you and you say to them oh my mentor is actually very good in X sql but i struggled it's a shame because you have access to me so how is it that you have access to me and you're struggling if you know that you don't know, you've tried, it's not working, you're not able to. And that's why I asked, is it the same tax that is the situation? Because I'm glad you said it as well. In as much as Excel and Power BI are both powerful tools, a lot of organizations want you to have that SQL knowledge. A lot. More than 70% of roles, except the, even Power I, I was looking at some jobs last week and I saw Power BI analysis and I saw proficient in SQL in my mind I'm like what do you guys need SQL for is it not Power BI analysts people are looking for so even Power BI analysts they are looking for people who are proficient in SQL you can't really run away from SQL completely if it's not MS it will be Oracle one one of them you must use it so please don't don't underestimate the um some of my old students are the funny thing is you will be added once you guys are done we have like a page i'm going to turn that page into um that group into an alumni group where everyone gets to communicate and that way you can keep the the um the network going because it's not just about coming to learn the skills the network house the network is also very important so that way if one of you have um something to to you know pass on maybe you have too much contract on your hand you can pass it you can help each other but you can't have access to me and and you know you say oh this thing is giving me a quick people outside of this class on twitter have messaged me privately to say oh midday i'm struggling with this sq and i tell them oh okay my day is busy but i can give you a quick 30 minutes by 9 30. sometimes i'm on calls with people by 10 30 11 not because i don't have better things to do or because i'm even reading i have exams throughout next year so i have things to do on my own but sql is is like my baby and i don't like it when people struggle with it because i feel like it's it's one of the easiest it's english as long as you understand the factor that is english you're good so you, i'm on calls 10 30 11 with people solving it and then you have access to me one of you have brought up the fact that oh i didn't respond to me now speak to Afiz. there's no how Afiz message messages me twice in a day that i won't respond because then i know it's very important speak to Afiz and say to Afiz, oh maybe somebody is trying to get your attention maybe you don't have their number saved he will come to me and tell me but don't don't be lackadaisical. Don't say, oh, uh, I beg. It's, uh, just let the fire burn. Let the fire burn in you. Now is the time to let the fire burn in you until you get a job, until you land that your first role and you have confidence. And Afiz is here. He can testify to the fact that the more he's been doing interviews, he's a bit more... Con he taught you guys. He only went through my class once and he taught you. But his confidence level has grown because he doesn't stop practicing and he's doing interviews. He understands what's supposed, what he's supposed to say next and what he's not supposed to say next. He's better. So please, I beg you, practice, practice, practice. Make use of your access. 
post your questions. I don't know why you guys are always trying to come. If you're coming to ask me how I'm doing, my health or personal things, you can come to me personally. But if it's if it's um class things, post it on the group. Oh, Mide, this is what's going on. I'll say, okay. Oh, Mide, I'm struggling with this. Oh, Mide, my group is this. We don't know what to do. I've even asked you guys sometimes, do you want me to come into your, your tutorials? If you if you have something you do on your tutorials and nobody's able to solve it, call me. Even if I'm on a date, I most likely will run to a quiet place to answer you guys because you have access to me and you are my first point. Like every other thing for me is apart from my own personal like you know development. Every other thing for me is secondary. I would put you guys above any other thing. So please don't 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 um, SQL is it will show you shake like somebody said yes but you too you need to be determined to show it shaky if not it would just you would see it as this big god that it is not have a good evening have a good weekend um i'm going to upload the video now today i'm feeling better today so the video will not um take time sorry for last week i was just 